Let's hang on one more minute, Amy. We'll give, let people park. order. Tonight we are going to start with the library. So Amy, please fire away. Please. Um, so thank you very much. And uh, um, as with the other presentations, please stop me if you have questions during or, or before or after. Um, you will notice in the handout we did provide like the other divisions, uh, departments. Um, we do have a um, organization chart. Um, it's been fairly steady. It's pretty much the same as it has been for, for a while. But um, I will say that what is not on there are, are our substitute librarians, which we don't really have classified our substitute staff. Um, they're just more um, kind of casual. So um, overall, the library budget will be going up 1.25%. Um, it consists of an increase in salaries and a decrease in expenses. The move back to the new building has created quite a demand. Um, we expected a demand um, an increase. The automated systems that we've put in has helped to mitigate that, but it has not mitigated it in its entirety. Um, that's for the circulation side of things. In addition to that, we've also seen huge increases in our programs, our program attendance, the reference or research interactions, as we call them, which are, are basically answering questions, and of course, the community room use. Um, in terms of managing the community rooms, it is important to note that we went from having two rooms to um, that were available for both library and public to now having seven rooms, four of which are open to the public. So the physical management of the space is, is um, a, little, a little bit more complicated, quite a bit more complicated to be fair. Um, we did give you a, a little brief look at the impact of uh, what's happened since we've been in the new building. That's a um, quarter to uh, second quarter of uh, fiscal year 2017 compared to uh, second quarter of fiscal year 2016 um, with the exception of the room use which goes back to when we had meeting rooms 2014. Um, we do anticipate the growth to slow, but we anticipate it to steady out at approximately um, offering or providing 25 to 30% more services than we have in the past. So it is a significant impact. It's a bigger building and it's very popular and um, it's, it's, it's very well used. So all the growth that's, that's there is in line with the strategic plan that's filed on 
on with the state and that strategic plan was developed in 2015 into 16 and is a direct response to express community needs. Um, the increase in our program and services does have a direct impact on our staffing and in, quarter, in order to accommodate the fiscal guidelines that we have, we will be dropping Sundays from our service. We simply cannot provide, um, we're already stretched to provide this 63 hours to um, maintain the staff that we have and continue to provide good service through the other 60 hours a week, um, we will be eliminating those Sunday hours. And it is not a choice that we take lightly. We expect a certain amount of pushback. It's a very convenient, nice time for many people. Um, however, at some point, um, we had to make this discussion and it is something that we talked about um, at, at a couple of different trustee meetings and, and throughout. So it's not made lightly. The Board of Trustees does recommend restoring and potentially expanding these hours at the first possible um, economically feasible time. Currently, it's May, sorry, it's sept October through May from 2 o'clock till 5 o'clock, so three hours for those months. If based on community feedback of what they really want is what they would really like to have is September through June that coincides with the school year um, and is more like one to five, so maybe four hours for that same period of time. It's... Um, I think it's a shame to cut them, but again, it's something something had to go, and that's where the three hours that are the most uh, efficient to cut. Salaries account for about 79% of the library budget. We were open 3,063 hours in uh, fiscal year uh, 16, and that's 60 hours per week for a whole year, plus the Sundays. Um, let's see here. I, I find this all very, very dry and boring. Um, <laughs> I know, I know. The, the PowerPoint I did was much more fun. Um, so, yeah, so just to give you a background, we have four divisions. We have circulation and technical services, which are essentially back of the house. And they manage patron accounts, and they manage the processing, and they do a lot of, a lot of that stuff. They manage the rooms. Um, uh, we have over 18,000 patron accounts technically online. Technically, we have 21,000 patron accounts registered for Reading. Many of those, some of those, have not been used in a couple of years. So, um, but 18,000 that have been used in the last couple of years. We oversee, they oversee seven program and meeting rooms. Uh, we procure and process 12,000 physical items in the library a year. Um, and then we obviously handle the circulation. The reference. Oh, All right, we're gonna, all right, it's going to call the libraries we uh, trustees to order. We have quorum now. Thank you. Um, the Children's and Reference Division are what people are more familiar with, and those are sort of the front of the house. And they're, they're providing direct services to very specific age groups. So it's early literacy, which is birth to, to preschool, school age, teens, adults, and older adults. Um, the increase in um, <clears throat> reference and research interactions that we've had um, is an increase in a number, but anecdotally, I will also just share with you that we have seen an increase in the types of questions and interactions that are being asked. So instead of just how can I find this book, and we have asked m many of our library associates to take on some of what we call the triage questions. Where can I find this book? Do you have this book? You know. Where's the bathroom? Those types of questions. We have asked, we have, we have kind of more people answering those questions and the librarians are more dedicated to answering fairly in depth, work with me to get this book onto my iPad. Work with me to, um, I need to, to find three articles from, you know, I'm trying to buy a new dishwasher, can you show me how to use consumer reports online? Those types of interactions take a significantly more, uh, longer amount of time than answering whether we have a book or not. We still do continue to provide a lot of what we call reader's advisory, which is obviously, I like this movie, I like this book, can you help me find something? That also can be quite in depth, um, especially when you get someone who has actually already read everything that we have or watched every movie that we have, so then we're really struggling. But um, we do have a lot of uh, questions and they are, they're getting more in depth as, as we go along. Um, we had some really wonderful programs. Um, many of the programs, as, um, you may or may not know, the programs, um, the library pays for, the town pays for the library staff and the planning and, and implementation. If there's any fees involved, um, those are all funded through the Friends of the Reading Public Library or other sources that have donated to programs. So the town currently does not actually 
um, pay for any of the actual programming other than the staff time. Um, one of the other services that I think sometimes gets missed in our reviews are, are the homebound and senior services that we provide. We have 25 homebound patrons, and I say 25, it's not always the same 25. Sometimes um, people pass along and we get new patrons. Sometimes they're temporary. They just have had a hip replacement and they're not going to get to the library in a few months. Um, but on, on general, we're servicing about 25 homebound patrons. Um, there's a librarian who's in charge of that, and she works with volunteers to get the materials um, every two weeks back and forth to, to, to folks in the community. And she also maintains um, uh, reading collections at Sanborn, Pleasant Street Center, and the Sawtell Hospice House. So there's quite a bit of outreach going there. So we're really trying to reach all ages. Um, the materials budget is uh, reduced of a total of 2.15% from this year. Um, we have settled down to 14% of the total budget for that which will meet the MBLC certification requirements. Um, I believe I speak for the trustees to say that 15% would be awfully nice and it, it would be great, but we understand that there's some constraints and this is this is a, an accommodation that we're making. It keeps us certified, um, which is quite important. And um, at the same time, it, it, it brings us down and is a little more reasonable to use. Um, our professional staff are responsible for curating and decision for these uh, collections for both physical and digital. So we spend time going over not only what we buy for physical things, but how does that work that we have already. Um, the, the electronic portion of our budget is um, also called our virtual library. Um, it accounts for right now about 20% of our budget. Uh, these materials are very expensive and they are growing in use. Um, materials, um, online books, online magazines, um, we get consumer reports online. Um, we have downloadable audiobooks, downloadable ebooks. We have music tracks that you can download that you keep. Um, you have access to Ancestry.com, you have access to Tutor.com, Mango Language Learning. So a lot of these things are um, increasing as we, as we go along, and the prices actually are increasing as well. So we do, we're, we're trying to balance our electronic um, use and our electronic collection with the demand as well as um, complementing it to our print material, or I say, I say print, but physical materials. Um, let's see. I'm just trying to think of anything that jumps out at me in this. Um, one of the things my goals is is to sort of streamline our, our expense process. There are two lines. There was this library software licensing and supplies line as well, a li as, well as a library maintenance contract repair. Those two are rolled in together now. Um, basically, um, this is because when you have a piece of equipment, you need to have the software, and then they also make you get the the service so it, it, they, it ends up being very difficult to parse those out and I'm finding a few a few things that are going along in our budgets that we're trying to combine because it's just easier for accounting and the state doesn't require us to delineate um, the other library expenses are increased 1.5 point eight percent um, it's really not that much it's a hundred thousand um, dollars it's the largest part of this goes towards our um, integrated library system and that's what manages our patron accounts our serial subscriptions and our catalog and this is something that we, we get through our noble membership and the, the consortium membership is a huge asset when we are um, doing our collective buying it allows us to purchase things and, and maintain systems uh, with 29 other 28 other libraries so it gives us a little power that way um, and it is essential to doing our job noble does have an increase this year um, and I I'm not sure if that's going to be a an increase that we continue to see the reason I just bring it up today we actually just got done with le library legislative day yesterday and we met with a lot of our um, representatives at the state house and Congress um, senator Lewis and um, the state aid to libraries is dropping, and that affects us in several ways. One part of the state aid comes to us, so physically we will, you know, even if we keep doing the great job we're doing, the money that they give us, right now it's about thirty to $35,000 a year, is, is going to be going down or certainly not going up, and that's harder and harder as prices of things increase. It's not a huge portion of our budget, but it's very important to things like programming, marketing, and some other communications things that we have to do. Um, the other side to that is state aid also provides money to the consortium to provide things like high-speed internet. We, we get high-speed internet in our, in our library for every single resident can come in and use our Wi-Fi and our computer at a very, very minimal cost that comes with our subscription to Noble. 
as state aid to those consortia go down, their, their costs increase and it becomes more expensive to us and we're unable to provide those services or we're gonna be priced out of a consortium like Noble. So the state aid, um, I'm just bringing it up because I think it's something as, um, as a group that we should all be aware of that we do rely on it and, 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 and it allows us to also being certified, it allows us to get grants. Um, so as that state aid drops across the board, um, a lot of the cooperative services that we use that get our patrons, get our residents what they need is a little bit at risk. Um, and it has dropped steadily for the last 12 years. So if anyone's ever interested in those numbers, I can absolutely get it to you along with emails and telephone numbers you can call to, to vigorously object. Um, uh, the professional development, technology, equipment, and office supplies remain level um, to, accommodate, um, to accommodate the other increases that are going on. The last paragraph in there is just a note to um, a, lot of this, a lot of the equipment that we have now, the automated <coughs> materials handling, the self-check equipment, kiosks, and even some of the new computers that we've purchased. Um, those are all set through, through fiscal year 18. We shouldn't have any bills coming in for support and maintenance of those or, the so or you know, upgrades to the software and things like that. They are not currently in the budget um, for fiscal year 19. The state aid that we receive will cover that along with a few of the other things that we need. However, with the state aid in that situation, we may not be able to rely on that. So when fiscal year 19 comes along, there may be a brand new line or you may see an increase on that li library software whatever line that's currently at about $60,000, it may jump up to something like eighty or $85,000. That may be the need. Um, trying to find other balances for that, but that is the reality of maintaining a lot of this computer equipment. Um, the equipment is providing the services. It's um, We have seen an increase in our circulation. It's taking a, a bulk of that, but it's not taking all of that because we still have people um, who want to check out in person or you know don't want to don't want to come use the automated they throw it in the outside box so we actually get quite a few returns overnight so and that's the budget questions David I guess say so your hand first yep um, when you say you know to stay within the 125 percent budget guidance what's we were just basically given our I wouldn't say we I was under the impression that about 1.25 was about the maximum we wanted to see each department go. Um, I wasn't told to cut or slash below that. Um, and I think it was mentioned very early on in the introduction that this doesn't include a step and a 0.75% COLA, so a total of 2.75% on most of the salaries. Um, so in order to, to give the salary increase and not be at 275, we cut, made cuts in other locations. And then, sorry, I may have to miss this, but um, from a staffing purposes, so were there any additional staff? No. no. The, um, we will be rounding out some hours, so we will be trying to bring people that are sort of at maybe 20 hours, up to 24 hours. Um, we have one, one position in the children's room. The children's room is really strapped. I will tell you, they're actually over budget. We're scrambling to keep up with the number of people and the number of just the, the bodies in the children's room. So there's a position that we're um, going to be bringing up from 22 <coughs> hours to 32 and a half hours, which actually um, is an important employee retention uh, for us because it gives us, it gives that person a position into the, to the pension and that's uh, very important to us. So um, there's not a full add if you do the total hours. And again, we have um, about 40 employees and it's a total right now of about 20.5 FTEs and it'll bring us up to, I think, 21.1 it's like it's like half a person that it will technically go up but it's not a new hire okay. and it's to cover that impact from Monday through Saturday and then, um, so lastly so how do you think about the salary increase in terms of you know adjustment inflation adjustment other types of oh, I think it would be great to have more um, I think um, I have to say that we have been bringing a lot of our, our in the library, we've been bringing a lot of our um, salary lines and we'll be bringing a lot of our salary lines into um, into where we feel they should be. Um, they were lagging a little bit behind. I think right now we're in a place, we're in a very good place. Um, we're not at the very tippy tippy top, um, and but we are not, I think, no, we are no longer in the, like below the 50%. I saw a couple of decreases. Um, Decre yes. Those are? Cause 
I'm cheaper to work. No, um, no, I'm sorry. That was very flippant. I shouldn't have said that. Um, we've had transitions in our management team, okay. and um, so when you take someone out at step 12 or step nine, or and you bring them in at you step two, you have we're able to save that, and we're trying to sweep all those savings back into to providing services. Okay. So sorry. I'm so flippant. Mm -hmm. Eric. Um, hi. Hi. <laughs> The Sunday hour cut yep. <clears throat> on page 65 of the chart, I mm -hmm. up, that's, what's that in hour? It that's is like, it's like 31, hours. yep. Okay. All right, there's nothing else Yeah, this chart that. No. Okay. <clears throat> um, the chart on page 63, you said it yep. was Q2 versus Q2? Yes, um, it, basically October to December and October to December. Um, with the exception of the room use, which is compared against, I mean, it's 2016 versus 2017, with the exception of room use, which right. is a couple years ago. How, what, what's new patrons? Is that Those are, growth in patrons or yes. growth in new patrons? It's growth in it's growth in new it's it's new people registering for new cards. It's okay. So so normally we do about 60 to 70 new cards. But, you know, that's people moving out. Sometimes it's people losing their cards. Sometimes it's a kid in the family. Um, so we usually do about 60 to 7 per month, and that's been pretty steady for a number of years. Um, but we consistently have seen really high numbers. And they, they, a lot of these are people that are um, either new to town or have never used the library before, right. which is really heartening to us. Um, so it's but, more than double. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're processing a lot. No, I'll, I'll, I lost my card. So well, you, you can become a statistic now <laughs> for a dollar. Oh. <laughs> Asterisk for two bucks. Yeah. <laughs> my neighbor works there. She waved. Yeah. Oh, she okay. Waved All right. There you go. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> um, the new programs has her programs have also yes. almost doubled. Yeah. So um, that is, I would, I was. At first blush, it seems unfair to compare this this year against last year because we were in the temporary space last yeah, year yeah. and we had no programming space. But having said that, our programs during the two years while we were in a temporary location dropped very minimally because these folks went out to Parker, Coolidge, the police department. They were at the senior center, it's on Pleasant Street Center. They were um, everywhere. We were having the programs, and um, so they have increased. There was in our goals from the strategic plan was to greatly increase particularly the children's programming and that was based on direct feedback from a survey of about 1600 people um, in 2015 to 16 when we did the strategic <coughs> planning um, so that is part of it it it's we because we have the space now and we're offering the programs people are showing up and I don't think we expected to increase that but there for example with the children's story times is a great example um, we have had in two cases, we would have a story time at 9:30, and we would have 60 people show up. Well, the room can only, the room can only hold 30 people. <laughs> so, um, so we we would we would um, give them a ticket, and, and then we would do a second story time at, at, at 10 o'clock. So they would, you know, we would just double it up. It wasn't planned. It, that's where you you see the stress on the staff. The turning away 30 people, which it, well, I guess maybe they're 15 parents with two little ones, um, is a significant you know, to me, denial of service. So if we can get a body on the floor to cover the desk while that librarian repeats her story time, that's an effective use of time, yeah. so. And the story was about fire trucks. And right? the story was about fire trucks and safety and police. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> and snow plus. <laughs> so the, 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 these, these are programs that are conceived of and executed by the, the library staff based yep. on community demand. Yes, okay. yes. Um, there was a particular uh, request for for the early literacy for the zero to five. Um, we already provided a, a large number of them. I mean, these folks are on track to basically offer well over, um, you know, a program a day. I mean, 365 yeah. children's department alone, not including the teen and adult services. There's a really, really high demand. Um, so. Um, sorry, I have more. You answered a couple of these. Okay. So that's good. Um, I think you'd mentioned when you presented to the selectmen. Mm -hmm. Some I don't know if it's a state law or, or what it is where mm -hmm. a certain year's increase has to be the average yes. of the last three. Or what, can you yep. articulate that? Yep. The yeah. the, um, the library um, certification is 
the minimum standards for free library, free public library services is from a statute from Mass General Law 78. And um, the th there are three major parts to that. One is the open hours, and that's decided by the, the size of your community. Um, by our community, we, need, we must be open in order to remain certifi certified 59 hours a week, 60. Um, so the second is the materials budget allocation, and that means of whatever the municipal appropriation is, a certain percentage, based on your size, has to go to materials. That's where we have the 14%. That's 14. Is the That's the 14 of the overall of, of, of the overall budget. So, so matter, whether you gave us 100,000 or a million, 14% of it needs to be, and we are at that. At the, the third part of that, though, is the actual municipal appropriation itself. And that requires that um, over a three-year period, it um, increase, um, I'm going to get the numbers wrong, it's equal to 1.25% a year over a three-year period. So you can either do a lump, you know, a huge increase one year and you're good for two or three years, or you, you can make sure you average that 1.25% increase every year. Okay. So what that prevents you to, from doing is saying like, well, we're just gonna cut, you know, we'll keep the 14%, we'll keep the 60 hours, but we're just gonna slash your budget by, by 60% because we just can't afford it. Yeah. So you have to meet all three of those thresholds in order to remain certified. So That's even if someone came down and said, here's all the materials budget, here's 14% of that entire budget, and we're just gifting it to you, and you can spend it, yeah. you can't cut that whole amount, I mean, because you still need to at least increase by one and a quarter percent. What's the consequence of not doing it? When you're not certified, um, you are not, first of all, you're not eligible for state, for, for grants. You're not eligible for state aid. So there's income. Um, both ways, whether you apply for it through extra grants or whether you apply for it or whether it's just the state aid. But the third thing that's incredibly important is that you get no reciprocal privileges um, through other libraries. So we can have a fully functioning, somewhat funded, open library in Reading. You may not go to Wakefield and use their library. You may not borrow their materials. You may not interlibrary loan anything, and they will turn you away. And this is something that the libraries um, most, I mean, there's like two libraries that will allow you to do that, so they're probably in Western Massachusetts. Um, but that reciprocal borrowing privileges is huge. Um, we do um, probably, I guess I know, we do 28,000 uh, loans out a year, and we get in about uh, 25,000, or reverse actually, I guess, but about 20 to 20, 20 to 30, 25 to 30,000 items that we send to other people in other towns in the state, um, and then we get back about the same. So the folks in our in our town have a, have a need for this. One last one, sorry. The, the, the state aid, where's is that reflected in one of these lines? No, okay. the state aid okay. is not a part of the municipal appropriation. So, okay. is NobleNet volume driven or is it a flat fee? It's, sharing? it's there's a comp. It, there's a there's a um, an equation, a formula. Thank you. There's a formula that is based on our population our usage of resources um, so we're we are a very busy library so we you know we're up there with Beverly and Salem who are much bigger than we are and so our, our costs to the service are, are about equal to that um, but it is it does, it does take into account that we do have a smaller population but um, apparently a very well educated population or at least well entertained <laughs> I've got a couple of questions for you. Sure, Mark. Um, at the end of page 66, you mentioned uh, fiscal 19 being yep. funds for the support updates. That's in tens of thousands, most yeah. likely. Yeah, 20. Yeah, it's, I would say. So I think I would say 25,000. Okay. To um, be that's that's a I don't know whether you call it conservative when you're over budgeting, but that's yeah that would be a worst case scenario. Yeah, I think. Or for the amendment. Okay. Um, the support organizations like Friends. Mm -hmm. um, what, how much support are they able to offer in a typical year? I know yep. that's not used for operating. Correct. How does that? Correct. Um, well, uh, um, they last year they gave us, or this year, I'm sorry, they've budgeted us twenty-eight thousand dollars for us, um, and and that is um, you know broken out. Some of that is for professional development. They do sponsor a staff day, which is very nice, and that allows us to, you know to do something as a staff and do a continuing education. So, um, and they do, they do manage some of the um, museum passes. They do pay for some of those. And if they didn't pay for that, those materials, then we would have to pay for that as well. So, so that's about, that's, they're the only ones that are dedicated and promising that money every year. Got it. So. Got it. You need more. Um, you're talking about internet and support. Mm -hmm. um, have Comcast or Verizon ever reached out? To yes, offer? actually, we are supposed to have by contract um, an access line from both of those. Um, right now, today, 
it's not working and we're working on that but it's hasn't I would love to get it for opening day and yeah. be able to have some baseball but um, that's probably not a priority to get them in there yeah so okay All right, but they're, they're hopefully gonna engage yes no and they always did we always did we were able to broadcast um, in previous years we had broadcast like some sporting events and some political events that you know were just going on during the, during the work day that people could pop in I think we had one one year we had a bunch of the Mar March Madness games that we could get yeah um, they weren't always you know they were filled with commercials and things but we had some stuff going on so great and are they um, could they be a solution for kind of high internet cost or I don't think so not at the cost that not not the cost that we get it from the state okay. it's really 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 low and, and honestly, I think that's, that has to do with the negotiations that we have coming up with our cable. I mean, I suppose you could try and write it into it, but from the presentation that I went to re regarding those cable contracts that we're going to be going into, um, that's not something that's really high on, on the cable network's priority to support. Hmm. So. Um, speaking of priorities and, and volunteers, yep. is there a community of seniors that volunteer yes we do um, we have um, I had it somewhere and I'm not going to be able to pull it out um, our volunteer hours last year um, <coughs> did I have it? I didn't have it we have a number of volunteer um, and I just didn't put it in I did have it and I didn't put it in um, we do um, oh wait I do have it <coughs> if you bear with me so this would be for, yeah. Um, I have to some more. I have to file this with the state stuff. I can get that information to you. I'm not seeing it right here, but I know I report it to the state, and we have something like a over. You know, like a thousand hours or something like that. Almost, oh, wow. it's almost, a, it's almost a half a person. Oh, wow. It's either a half Great. or a whole person. Super. So what's what's a whole person like? Thirty-seven and a half hours a week is twenty twenty two thousand forty-three or something like that. Nineteen eighty-seven. Okay, yeah. it is. It's a, it's actually almost a whole person, I believe, um, when you look Great. at that. So it's one almost one FTE that we get in volunteer time. Great. Um, my last question on um, grants: Are you able to? Um, get grants are you able to absolutely write grants? absolutely this was actually one of the first years we didn't have a grant because we thought we had a few other important things to take care of mm -hmm. so um, <laughs> we actually did have a grant on the table and at the very last minute we pulled it because we realized there's no way we would be able to manage our commitment to that grant um, we have had grants that re re relate to teens to local history to um, adult uh, elder services um, to children's we've had a steam grant um, for science and education so I would say almost <laughs> every year we have a grant application um, and most of the time we are successful it depends on obviously the competition um, one of the things I'm looking into for this year is something called the town-wide preservation assessment uh, collection and identification um, and that would be a town-wide grant but the library would apply for it Beverly is doing it currently and it's something that um, really addresses a lot of the historical information that we have in town. Hmm. Um, you know, if that's not due until November. Many of the other um, applica applications are due more like in October and September. But um, we have to make those decisions and have letters of intent. Cool. Any other questions? All set. Sorry, Paul. Yeah. Um, so is Sunday afternoon your lowest demand time? No. Nope. <laughs> no, it's not. But that was the choice to do yep. that instead of. Yes. Um, sun, uh, yes. So first of all, we have to if we drop those three if we drop three hours anywhere, okay, we have mm -hmm. to we have to make sure we have three hours. Overtime is Sunday is paid at overtime, so we're already paying one and a half times for, for those three hours, and it's not just three hours; it's actually three and a half hours because we have opening and closing times. But the more important thing from our perspective is that closing on Sundays does not affect in any way anyone's benefits or anyone's. Um, it doesn't require a layoff. Most of that is, subs is is additional extra time for librarians. So if I start cutting in the middle of the week, then those librarians are not then either going to go from 21 hours to 18 hours, or and lose benefits for sick time and paid to, you know paid time off. Um, and I also have to I can't get rid of three hours. I have <laughs> if I keep the three hours on Sunday, I'm going to have to cut four hours somewhere else to make the same amount of money, four and a half hours or whatever. So even a part-time employee, if they work Sunday, that's 
take it's extra. It's not. It's not included regardless. in there. Yes, Even because it's not, not guaranteed. Because it's only three. It's only. It's only seven months out of the year. So how? What would they do during the rest of the year? So. Oh no, I mean more from a. Um, yeah. Getting paid per hour. Yes, premium. they get paid. Yes, they get a paid. Premium yep. Even if you're Every not yep. employee. The only people is if I like our exempt employees um, are encouraged to take, you know, time time off for that. So we don't necessarily get paid for that. So if I were to come in, I would you know you come in late on Monday. Uh -huh. So, um, but it is very expensive, yeah. um, and um, it's it's the least um, invasive into our own staff, yeah, and for I, you know employee retention, I think that's very important. So, but it is not. It is not the lowest demand. Right, because they've got busy business. Hours. It is. I mean, it's busy all the time. Yeah. But you can also you can also say we're, we're our slowest time is from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. So we're going to close from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. because that's just not efficient either. So if we were to go strictly by the numbers of busyness, that would probably be what we did, because mm -hmm. um, there is a, there is a lull just you know before lunch. Everyone goes home for nap time, and that's before the teenagers come in. Mm -hmm. So. Um, uh, so there is definitely a lull, and we do track that in terms of both um, our check-ins and, um, you know, the actual busyness. We check our, you know, help computers and Wi-Fi um, statistics and stuff like that. So that is the slowest, but we can't. It's, we have to, again, we get back into that cycle of to save the same amount of money, we have to cut four and a half hours yeah. someplace else, yeah. and then now we're down an hour, so then we have to add another hour. Yeah. So. Um, and then with the new building mm -hmm. versus the old, has it changed your minimum staffing requirement in terms of Yeah, numbers? basically, yes. That's that, that's that point five person that we're really just trying to get in so that we can keep our heads above water. So that's the additional hours that we're going to be adding in. So um, through the, the money from Sundays is coming to supplement everybody's <coughs> increase, and then it's padding that service, those 60 hours of service from Monday through Saturday. Um, and that's because we need that extra time. Well, that's a volume base, no? The extra time you need? Right. Yes, like it's based on the... Let's say no one was even in the library. Right. <laughs> I assume there's a minimum staff yes, requirement. Yes, exactly. It has, it, 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 in a way it has, um, in that we have a, a fourth desk on the ground floor that we, we uh, that's where our phone rings now, and, mm -hmm. and so that's something that we haven't had to deal with. I think it's still too soon to say whether the impact on that, the impact on the staffing requires an actual whole, you know, yeah. 60 yeah. hours a week. I don't think that's the, I don't think that's that. I think there are other ways that we can manage it. One of the issues that right now, today, and this is the problem of planning a budget at this point, we've been open for six months. Yeah. And we're still trying to figure out what is novelty, what is substantive use, what, you know, what are the impacts. You know, it was. It's great. You know, people can keep up this pace for so long. Um, there's a few people, uh, you know, that may just crack. So, mm -hmm. you know, we we can't have that. We need to make sure that we're not. Everyone's just not really excited and they're are pushing on adrenaline because that adrenaline is going to drop off. So, we want to make sure that we do have adequate staffing. But I can't honestly tell you that the Too exact old. staffing is what we're going to need to run that building you know, like three years from now. Mm -hmm. um, so, it looks stunning, by the way, and it looks like thank you're you. doing a great job. Thank you. So I appreciate it. Any other questions? No. Thank you guys very much. Sure, thank you. Do you need to call an adjournment? Anyone leaving? Are you leaving? Motion to adjourn. So moved. Thanks, guys. Jeff, I think you're up. I'm going to close this window a little bit. Can you tell us where you are in the book, Jeff? Uh, page 57. Uh, 57. Uh, no, that's facilities. We're going to go to Public Works. I have 57. 57. Yep, thank you. Um, I don't know whether the committee got a copy of the most recent bullet chart. I don't know what they need. I think it's here. It's the one to send? Yes. Yeah. Okay, in the hand. Okay, so you get that. You have um, <laughs> <laughs> Just, Just a... Uh, if I might, just a couple of comments on the OCHI, just um, in general, we have 55 uh, FTEs in the, in the department. Uh, we have five uh, long-term seasonals and two short-term seasonals. Um, you see, we do get involved with a couple of committees. Uh, I work with uh, the uh, Town Forest and Trails Committee, providing staff support, you know, as they need, items, especially with the Town Forest group. Uh, 
you know, helping them with supplies. Actually, they both have a budget. They both have a thousand dollar budget. Both the trails committee and, and forest committee that they use to buy materials to, you know, to build uh, uh, things in the forest, uh, bridges and things that they actually work with some of the uh, volunteer groups, some of the scout groups, they, uh, and so that's where, they, where most of their money goes. Um, the other thing I like to mention in the in the org chat is that um, at this actually as of this June. Uh, we'll have come kind of full circle. Part of my marching orders when I first came is that uh, I was to look at uh, a, a succession plan because there were a lot of people going to be leaving the department, retiring, changes. Uh, well, come this June, we're going full circle. We've replaced all f four supervisors as well as uh, my assistant uh, director, actually, Jane Patel, our assistant director is here. Um, just in case I make any full pause that she can straighten me out. <laughs> uh, but uh, so so those all those supervisory positions have been replaced. Um, uh, engineering, water, sewer, highway equipment maintenance, uh, Fox Forestry Cemetery, a lot is retiring this June. Um, the the bad news was, uh, especially in uh, water and sewer, we lost an individual with uh, uh, 43 years of experience. And in highway, we lost an individual with 46 years of experience. But the good news was in highway, we picked up, uh, these, these mostly were internal promotions. Uh, we picked up somebody in highway with 40 years, so I think we lost, we lost six years, so I think I, that, wasn't, that wasn't too bad. Um, and then uh, in water, uh, we had uh, uh, internal promotion. I think Peter had been here like uh, 15, 20 years, so it worked out, worked out well. Um, I think we got an uh, excellent group. Um, and one thing I do have to compliment the, the town, actually, with the, the town manager on is that I uh, was able to, over the last few years, through some professional development money and some training, uh, these guys got all got, the people got all in a position where they got the uh, specific licenses they needed and, and, and training qualifications to be able to move up to be qualified for these positions. So that was a real plus, and that's kind of kudos to the to the town for, for doing that. I think last year we had, I think in administration we had like $20,000 for professional development, and I think they should maybe 15, but it, it's a really, um, it goes a long way, I think, to professionalize the department and put us up in a position where we kind of could end up where we were. So that was a real plus. Um, as far as the budget, uh, not too exciting, I'm afraid, uh, other than the fact that uh, the budget is going up 1.2 percent uh, for the year uh, compared to last year's budget. Uh, uh, as as everybody has in their hand, the department uh, overview consists of several divisions: general fund, including administration, engineering, highway equipment maintenance. Uh, stormwater, not the enterprise fund, Pox Forestry Cemetery. Uh, town meeting obviously approves uh, the, uh, the line items, uh, total line items for salaries and expenses. Overall salaries uh, going next year is up 1.4%, small increase based on uh, projected step increases and a small 0.75% uh, COLA. Um, overall expenses actually are down in the operations uh, portion, uh, down 2.94%. Uh, basically, that's reflected in one major line item, the fuel account. As you'll notice, that that's uh, been reduced by 50000 just based on history and based on projected need for next year. So um, that's what's really driving that equation, uh, reduction in expenses. Um, administration, just quickly going over some of the specific division functions. The administration division, as you can see, supports the department with contract administration, budget preparation, uh, payroll, personnel uh, actions. Um, uh, that particular budget administration, uh, expenses are level funded, again, small increases in salaries to reflect the step increases in a, and uh, a small COLA that's projected out. Um, moving to the engineering division, uh, engineering division provides services to all departments within the town, uh, responsible for preparation of plans, specifications, estimates, survey layout, inspection, supervision of town construction projects. Um, uh, over, oversees the Chapter 90 uh, program for road uh, road work, uh, reviews conservation uh, submittals, preparation of pavement management plan. They do a lot. I mean, is engineering is a is a, obviously is a major department that does a lot of things in town. Um, later on, I'd like to do a quick overview of some of the more capital projects that that they're involved with. Once we get towards to the general operating uh, portion, um, the uh, engineering budget uh, actually salaries are, are decreased slightly. Um, because basically because of turnover. Uh, we've got uh, a previous engineer retired and, um, and actually uh, because of the uh, town engineer position, they did cost some savings, the FY17 is carried through to 18. Uh, we have a civil engineer position that, ha uh, that has been vacant in, uh, in this year 
due to the hiring freeze, but uh, hopefully it'll be filled shortly, at, at least definitely before uh, FY18, but at a reduced salary level. So those two reductions uh, in the town engineer position and the senior civil by bringing people in at the, at the bottom scale uh, saved, uh, saved quite a bit. Um, the Highway Stormwater uh, Division, uh, responsible for the construction, maintenance, repair of all roadways, catch basins, drainage uh, systems, sidewalks, traffic street design, along with snow plowing, sanding and salting activities. Um, again, the uh, overall, sal overall uh, uh, wages increase is, uh, is uh, basically uh, some more reduction, uh, and this is due to the one position in, uh, in the department that we're lo losing next year. It's a uh, seasonal long-term seasonal position. That's where you see the uh, uh, 20, uh, I think it's 22,000, $22,000 cut going to next year. Uh, that's why that uh, uh, budget is only going up 0.6%. Um, overall, the reduction uh, is seen as, as something that's, you know, it's gonna affect the department, but uh, overall and in general, it's not uh, gonna be a, have a drastic effect. Uh, basically, it'll, what'll happen is, especially during the summertime, when we have a lot of activities going on, um, I use that position to help fill in some of the crews because you know some of these people have been here quite a while and they get four or five weeks vacation in the summertime. So um, a lot of times it's going to get me down from probably you know two crews down to one crew just you know for bas basic maintenance, side water work, and so forth. So that's really the the only major effect. Um, but again, I mean, uh, the community knows that uh, you know certain departments have to make certain adjustments and, and reductions. So that was a that was the one position really that came from from uh, public works. Um, the uh, expenses in the highway, uh, we did cut a, uh, a line item for uh, sidewalk repair, although we put additional funding in the, in the capital budget. That was a $10,000 line item cut. Um, and again, this is, the, this is the, uh, the budget that has the fuel account that was reduced uh, to uh, what, what reflects the reduction in the overall expenses by, was it, 3.86%. Parks Forestry Division, again, uh, maintains street trees, grounds, uh, all town-owned properties, parks, schools, ball fields, playgrounds, tennis courts. Um, you see some increases here um, in the personal services category. Basically, that's reflective of the, uh, the change that we're uh, actually kind of in the process now of going through and uh, replacing our, um, and it applies to the cemetery division as well, in that uh, the parks and Park supervisor and cemetery supervisor actually a shared position. Uh, it's an unusual. So each line item, FY18, has been adjusted slightly. Kind of, we're not sure we're going to continue that arrangement. I mean, we're going through a process now to, to see what's out there. And, and uh, but to have a combination parks, forestry, cemetery is unusual. And very few communities have that arrangement. Um, so we're not sure. Depending on what, how that goes, will we fill position? And so that's why the flexibility is there to be able to do something if we need to next year. Um, it just depends on how that really gets finalized. Um, the, uh, some of the uh, accommodated costs that um, actually not too much change. The snow and ice uh, is level funded again this year at 625 for the third consecutive year, um, 625,000. Uh, as you see, FY15 was a, was a tough year. We spent a million, a uh, million four. Um, and uh, it's one of those line items that actually when I first came, I know we talked about trying to get on a plan where we, we at least start approaching the 10-year average. And actually, for the first four or five years, we actually bumped it up 25, 30,000 a year. And you know, we had 625, which is which is pretty good. I mean, it's not. You see the chart there. I think it's still below the 10-year average. But um, you know, it's one of those accounts that you know, if you need it, you, you spend it. If you don't, <laughs> you don't. It's just. Uh, uh, but I think uh, I think we're in a position to be at least compared to other communities that we've somewhat in the ballpark in terms of that, that, that budget. I mean, a lot of communities will just budget, keep it extremely low, knowing that regardless, they can overexpend and just, if they budget 150,000, they gotta spend three, four, five, five, whatever it is, you gotta spend, you know, for public safety, obviously, to, to keep the streets uh, open and clear, so. But I think, um, again, I think kudos to the town. We try to make some progress, and we do okay there for a while, uh, adding that, uh, uh, bumping that up, so. Um, so it's, it's at least uh, somewhat in the ballpark. Where are we at right now, Jeff? Uh, we're down uh, from the 625. We're in the hole, I think, around 100. Something 725 like so far. So far. I think the, the one storm that, so the, the, yeah. the yeah. one storm that killed us, the one, that Sunday storm where actually the guys came in at 2 o'clock in the afternoon and actually they stayed till 3 o'clock the following Monday. So they did 25 hours. 
contract is I brought it a little bit later, but it, basically it's that one storm, plus, I, plus we did removal. The removal cost is $20,000, $25,000. We do all the removal downtown, you know, on Main Street and uh, Haven. We do all, this, all the piles, you know, the parking lots, all that's, they come in at nine o'clock at night and go to like six o'clock the next morning. And that's, that's the town's been doing that for, for quite a while. Um, we've had, uh, actually we've had 18 events this year, actual events. Uh, actual plowing events, we've had four of those. We've had, uh, out of the four, we had contractors in twice, and we had our guys just do the plowing twice, so um, it, it's, uh, people think that, you know, it's kind of been a light winter, but you remember all these uh, events with, with the, actually the highway guys to go out with salt and sanding, that could be anywhere from a couple hours to four or five hours, you know, all you need is like a, a dusting, you know, it could, could make things slick and we get the call from the police and the guys go out and, and do their thing, so. Um, there's more activity than most people say. Even 18 times, it doesn't seem like the winter has really dictated that. But it's been, it's been a uh, uh, so snow and plowing hasn't been that much so far. Huh? But uh, but we've had a couple tough. That one week especially, we had like on a 10 day period, they were all like seven days out of the 10, and that's what uh, that killed us. But hopefully, hopefully we're uh, going the other way. But for, I hear things that I don't want to talk about tonight. <laughs> as far as things yeah, may be we'll, happening. I'm sorry to interrupt. We'll, when we look at that budget, is that covering, it's covering materials, it's covering overtime, overtime everything, and contracts, contracts, services, and materials. Um, one of the things that uh, over the last couple of years that has increased dramatically is the cost of salt, load salt. I mean, three or four years, we're at, and we're at a consortium, I mean, so we try to take advantage of a, a bulk bid situation, which, which helps. But um, three or four years ago, we were paying you know, 45, 49 uh, uh, dollars a ton. Now we're up to 60 something, 60. So, and actually, it's it's interesting that the the equation has actually changed now. Um, before, the program was if you get like two or three inches, you could use material and, and keep going out with materials and, and melting the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the snow until you get to a point where you know you're okay. Well, now with the cost of the material, I'm almost at a point where I'm better off. Where actually I don't use the material, I bring the contractors in. But if you get four, three, four, five inches, and we scrape everything down once, pay the contractors for us, get them out, that cost versus paying the material, the material yeah, sixty dollars a ton but over and over and over again. Uh, economically, it makes more sense to bring, bring the contractors in, which was kind of a new phenomenon. But again, it's based on the increase in the salt salt price as much as anything else. Um, uh, uh, we have we have one hundred and ten miles all, all that we do, and really it depends on on, a, on the on the storm. It really. You've got a real, if it's a real dry st uh, storm versus an ice storm, I mean, you could, and, and we really, um, last couple of years, we really started controlling our distribution. Uh, you know, uh, again, g days gone by, we used to really crank up those spinners and, and, and uh, put a lot of material down. Well, now, uh, we're being more conservative. I think, obviously, it helps in the cost of the salt, but also, I think you get better, better with the, with the, uh, uh, with the turn to uh, spread less you get, I think, a better coverage, and it stays in, in, in place. When you get those things wide open, you tend to spread the material out more and not get as quite a good coverage. But, um, but it's uh, uh, again, all every storm is a little bit different, and you just gotta gotta watch it and uh, um, you know control your your uh, your use. We're over now. That, that's since the date that's of the report. The day of the report was when was the big storm? Was the date? Uh, yeah. It was early, early to mid February. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Time. Yeah. yeah. Time. yeah. <laughs> Actually, look, I see we're we're, do, we're doing pretty well until until, until, until then. Um, <laughs> I had the same question. Dave. <laughs> <laughs> the um, the uh, the rubbish recycling. Uh, FY17, we the town did sign a 10-year agreement with JRM for the removal and transfer of rubbish and, uh, and recycling. Uh, the first year saw a bump up, um, and a lot of that had to do with the, actually with the recycling market. Uh, the, the market just, the bottom fell out of the recycling market. We had a, uh, a, a very advantageous contract the previous five years going into this, uh, but uh, just for example, uh, a couple of, a year ago or so, uh, instead, you know, uh, people actually have to pay to get rid of recycling. Uh, three or four years ago, the contracts were getting like $150, 200 bucks a ton for paper. Now. Last I saw it, it was down to 15 or 20 dollars a ton. They're actually having to pay to get rid of some of the recycled material, glass. There's no market, so that's really what drove that equation up the first year. Uh, as you can see, over the next X amount of years, it's a fairly reasonable, you know, two and a half, three percent increase going forward. Um, but if you look at the chart, that's 
Great. Is, but the good news is really we continue to be a, uh, uh, a really uh, a community that does really well in recycling. Um, we look at the communities comparing us to uh, only what Newburyport and Gloucester, uh, uh, 33% and 32% are higher in recycling rate than we are. And we're at very consistently, we're at 30%. Um, I think this past December actually was the highest I can ever, we can, we've ever had here. December recycling was 35 or close to 36%, which again, for a non pay as you throw community, I mean, is really outstanding. And of course, that's all that recycling, that's saving your tipping fee. That's, you know, you're not paying the tables of your trash. So um, that's really, uh, and, and again, going back to, uh, was it 2012, where we did the, the, the town actually won a uh, recycling award from Mass Recycle, for the municipal recycle of the year. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and again, right now, I think we're up to, there's like eight or 10 communities now that uh, some through JRM and through some through other contractors that have our exact same program. I mean, mandatory weekly recycling. They have the, the two big days we have at the, at the yard, recycle days, you know, twice a year. Um, they have the, the leaf collection, you know, three in the uh, spring, three in the fall, two in the spring. So I don't know what that means, but maybe imitation is, uh, is uh, falling flat or something, but it really is um, <clears throat> an excellent program. We still get calls from communities saying, uh, you know, how we did that. And, uh, and as you recall, when we, did, when we start enforcing the mandatory recycling, that wasn't easy. We, we did that, and, but you know, we did it the right way. We did a lot of publication. We sent out notices to everybody. We did mailings. We did stuff on the website. It really was the education, I think, that, that helped really that, uh, that particular issue. Plus, the first, the first uh, month or two, we did some soft enforcement. I mean, we kind of worked that way into that, but now it's, um, and you get on you get on any street and the recycle and down. All you see is red coming down the street with the red bins. It it really is uh, again a credit to uh, to, to really the residents that have to pick that up and really um, we get very few calls now. I mean, uh, as far as issues with with recycling or, or trash collection, which is nice. Um, before we get in, any questions, I just would like to just run through some like some of the capital projects that the, that the, that the uh, department is involved with. Um, Again, so we're talking about the operating day-to-day -day, uh, stuff. Uh, this is more uh, just to give you kind of a flavor of some of the major projects that are ongoing now, and, and most of them funded through the capital. Um, uh, this is FY17, actually, and FY18, but uh, a Phase B water main capital improvements that uh, that's where we replaced 5,600 feet of water main. That's where we did the Salem project, Salem Street. That was last year. We finished that. Uh, we have an MWRA, North Intermediate High, 36-inch pipeline, which is under construction now. That's the one that went down Oak Street down summer. Uh, that was 7,600 feet of 36-inch main that has been installed to date. It's about 80% complete, maybe even more of that, more of that now. Uh, the uh, uh, West Street and Bachelor, uh, West and Bachelor Road pump station projects, that's under construction. That'll be done uh, probably in the next uh, couple of months. We have a Bond Street drainage project under design. That's gonna be 175 feet of roadway Reconstruction on Bond, including uh, drainage improvements. Grove Street, water main drainage improvements under design. 1,000 feet of uh, replacement of uh, tw old 12-inch cast iron with new cement line pipe. Get Main Street, Mills, Main and Mill Street, water main cleaning and lining. That's uh, approximately 15,000 feet of water main cleaning and lining. That's going from uh, Main Street from Salem uh, all the way uh, down to Mill Street. And that's a cleaning and lining where every 500 feet or so. Luckily, that's not, you're not digging up all the Main Street, but you're going down every 500 feet or so and opening up a, an area. And actually, there's a system where you actually clean the, the current system and put a lining inside the current pipe. So you're reusing it, and it's obviously a lot le less disruptive and it's a lot less expensive to do that. Um, and that's, uh, that'll be starting up. Uh, again, that's kind of ties into also the whole North Reading joining NWRA uh, uh, project that's still, you know, uh, percolating this, uh, this bit. They've obviously, I think North Reading has voted to join MWRA. Uh, they appropriated some funds. They have consultants uh, on board. Actually, they've already, I think, purchased some property off, off a mill uh, for a pump station location. So they're moving forward with that, but uh, they've got a ways to go. I think they're going back in June for additional funding to actually step up the process. And I think they were looking for, I think it was, was it January of 19 or July of 19, something that was their kind of their target to, be a full MWRA uh, member. Um, and we're not paying anything that's not getting reimbursed that relates to that activity, right? Right, right. Okay. Um, Just making sure. A <laughs> couple other quick items. Uh, we've got uh, a uh, 
phase nine sewer INI project uh, upcoming. Uh, that's through our, uh, from MWR, they have a grant loan program. That's going to be going, going for a while. That's uh, infiltration inflow where we, in either, uh, we replace and align some of the sewer mains that may be leaching out. And uh, uh, that's, that's been an ongoing pro uh, program for quite a while. Um, 2017 spring summer road improvement program. Uh, under design, looking at uh, 3.8 miles, $1.2 million worth of uh, street improvements, 15 streets. Uh, just to give you a little flavor of how we've been over the last few years. 2014, we did uh, 2.9 miles, 21 streets. 2015, 4.8 miles, 30 streets. 2016, uh, 5.2 miles, 28 streets. And some of these streets weren't maybe the whole street, but there were sections of streets. Um, I, I've noticed the last couple of years, we started to concentrate a little bit more in neighborhoods, where prior to, even prior to my arrival, I mean, we're doing some of the main roads. We, you know, doing like the forests uh, and, and Franklin. You know, and you know some of those streets are good to do. But you know, you do uh, paving and you do curbing and you do uh, concrete sidewalks. You could spend, you know, half a million, three quarters of a million dollars on one road. So the last few uh, years, we're getting involved with a little bit more of, of uh, neighborhoods. We've done some microsurfacing, pavement maintenance, a little bit of a different approach. Um, but again, going forward to this year, um, we've got uh, 15 streets, and and again, I you know. I talk to some of my colleagues in other communities that I tell them, you know, that, uh, you know, most, most communities uh, for road improvements, all they get is chapter 90 money, which, you know, for us is like right. 603,000. Not a lot of communities appropriate road money for, you know, for road improvements. And again, we've been in the 1.2, 1.3 million for, for a number of years now for road improvements based on what the town puts up the another 400,000. So, um, and just to give you an idea how, how, what improvements we've made, we've gone from a PCI, which is a pavement condition index, that was taken back in around 2012 and 13, we're at like 71 percent. Now keep in mind, 100 percent is like you go to a community where every street is brand new, just done, so, which is obviously, you back off from there. But we've gone from 71 percent in 2012 and 13 to now we're around, based on the, on the next reading, we're going to be in the 79 to 80 percent, which is really good. I mean, 80 percent, is that sound, but it really is good compared to other communities. So. And it shows. I mean, we spent a lot of money on roads for the last four or five years, and I think it's going to only show in the in the improvements. But I think um, it's something that um, uh, it's really again uh, to kudos to the town to, to keep that program going. We made a lot of progress there. Um, and I guess, I guess some of the future projects upcoming, we've got the Auburn Street water tank improvements. That's going to be upcoming in the next uh, year or so. Looking at some options there versus. That, that, Either in the, the, t the tank needs painting and improvements, and we're looking at an option of there versus uh, a new tank, and how that correlates to the uh, uh, to the uh, a tower say for the for the area. So that's that whole discussion is going to be up you know upcoming um, in the next year or so. Uh, we have a new flushing program, hydrant flushing that's going to be upcoming in the future, uh, coming up next year, um, and we've got some GIS uh, implementation integration programs that we're going to be implementing to some of the some of the town functions. So this is all just capital stuff. This is all things, a lot of things uh, going through engineering. Some of it, uh, we're also getting involved with some outside consultants. Um, keep in mind, we've gone from, what, th two years ago from an engineering of seven people. Uh, currently, we have uh, four people uh, in staff. So um, actually, we have one vacancy now that, that we're looking to, to fill to get that back up. So, and once, you know, once we get to the spring, um, uh, the staff is, is out there every day. I mean, I want them out there overseeing these projects. And again, it's not just our projects, but we got the MWA projects, we got Mass DOT, so it just, it's a lot. And they're out there, and there may be some occasion where people may, may come into the, into the office, and you know, which they do now, and want some help for, for whatever reason, that they may have to just you know, take a message, take a number, and, and come back. But I think we're holding our own. I think going forward, uh, especially when we fill this, this uh, senior civil position, that actually we're advertising now and hopefully do some interviewing next week or so. I think that'll help. And I think uh, Ryan, uh, the new ten, uh, Ryan Purcell will do a town as you did, is doing a good job. And he's really, I think, managing these projects. Uh, but also, um, I like the, the idea that some of the things that are a little bit, either a little bit more complicated, or for whatever reason, we're getting some outside help, which I think is, you gotta be realistic. I mean, what you can do, what you can't do. Um, and I think he, he is, and I think that's helping the cause as well, so. Um, so, so again, I think overall, the budget itself is really not much change. I mean, it's just not, not going up that much. But I think, uh, again, we have a, uh, 
a very, uh, we're getting a younger crew in, I think, and again, it's, uh, uh, we, do, we do, a, do a lot of training. We do a lot of things through Maya. Uh, we've had uh, a number of uh, uh, safety programs that we've run through Maya at the garage. Uh, things like uh, 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 slips and fall, a back injury prevention, things that they would, they would come in and put a seminars on for us. We take advantage of all those and I think, uh, was, I think it was last year, I think we were in the neighborhood of $50,000. We got back on our insurance premium because we, we participate in all these programs, we get a reduction, and we were one of the highest ones in the state. I don't know if we would be highest, but um, that really uh, pays dividends, not only for the guys in terms of the safety and training, but also for the town in terms of benefit from a liability standpoint. We get that back, so, um, but anyway, I think I've done enough talking for, for, for one question. Question for you, um, um, Route 28 Main Street, is that all state? And what's happening and when, or my car is very unhappy. The 28 up uh, Main Street going up to 128 on the uh, I guess that's the what the north the oh, south the side. condition of the road yeah what happened is it that's a state um, yeah. and actually it was a year or so ago we were actually in line for some uh, road money to, to it's, it was on their list to yeah. redo um, but the problem was you know we had our water project which we had to finish that off um, and right and we have we have funding now to actually part of our permit was to actually pave half the road partly with the trenches to pave the half. But really we don't want to do that because there's also some discussion with the gas company. They may come in and do some work. Uh, so they don't, obviously don't want to pay until you know, that gets finalized one way or another. Um, and also the Hopkins Street intersection, that's, that's still pending to have that uh, intersection be done. Again, that's gonna, that would affect some paving. So it's on their list to do. Um, and I think it's just a question of once uh, we know that all the activity there is, is done, it'll, that'll be uh, in line. So next year, year after, I mean, yeah. it's, it's. But it's all, the state is responsible that, yeah, for it. it is, absolutely, yep. That road is terrible. Questions? Go ahead, Vanessa. So Parks Lodge Cemetery Supervisor, mm -hmm. uh, will the replacement there be two, one person, one new person in each position? Will it be a new joint, or is? I think I'd like to answer that and say it's under collective bargaining and we have to be really careful. Exactly. We did budget more than one person to Right. We'll go. Yeah. Right. And just see how that, it's a unique position to have a combination of that. Uh, yeah, it's a very unusually combined yeah. position. Right. The guy that was very skillful at it. Right. One, one of the constituencies is quieter than the other, though. Right. <laughs> <laughs> one of low key than the other. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Laid back. That's right. I will stop for the. Um, can I ask you, it's a very sure. small question. Sure. In the Parks Department. Um, there are a lot of categories. I saw out of grade work and on call premium. Uh, I'm sorry, they're really small. Yeah. What are they? Out of grade is if there's a, uh, someone is out, someone is out. Uh, for example, an equipment operator is out uh, and there's a laborer, and we need an equipment operator that day, that laborer can move up to, if he has the licenses okay. to be equipment operator to, to do all, go out with the crew and do the work for that day. Um, and the on call is, uh, is a, in the contract uh, for both water and sewer and highway. Uh, we have a uh, individual who will be designated to be on call. So what happens is there's a, there's a, a, a stipend involved with that. Okay. I think they get 260 bucks for the week. So that means that they have to be around. I mean, if there's a water main break or if there's, or there's a, with the water sewer issue or there's a highway issue, um, they have to be available. Now, if they come in for whatever reason, there's a four-hour uh, four minimum, but that's part of the overtime or part of the contract. But So they are paid to be kind of on call. And actually, we do have it also with the uh, parks and forestry, but it's less of a year. I think it's uh, it runs, I think, just in the fall because of the fact that that's where most activity would be right. if, there's a, if there's an issue with the parks and forestry. But it's just to have someone available. And it works out really well. Um, you know, if, uh, if, again, if the, it's a water break, that person, they know who to call. The police knows who to call. They, they get them in. And then depending on the issue, either calls a crew in if it's a water main break or whatever the issue is. But uh, it's, uh, it works out pretty well. One last question. Uh, back to the rubbish disposal, the tonnage, and the recycling. Um, aside from the fact that it's great for us to be recycling more, yep. if we were recycling even more, would that result in a cost reduction to us or the community? Well, the, the more you recycle, the less you pay for, for disposal. So, uh, but you know, again, I where we are now in terms of the, the amount yeah, is it's going to be. I don't. We do weekly. I mean, there's not much really you could do uh, as far as uh, adding to that uh, mix. Um, we do, like I say, we do the recycle days. Um, 
but uh, it's pretty much, uh, people are surprised that we're at, uh, again, the last assembly was 35%. That's ex extraordinary for a non page to throw community. Can you it really is. The, that percentage mean? Does that mean the percentage of, of the overall trash, okay. of the overall tonnage, it was like the 35%. Okay. David? Uh, just a quick one. On the cemetery trust fund, what is that? Uh, where does that support come from? Uh, the trust fund is uh, funding through a separate account. Oh, I'm glad that uh, comes into yeah, the. Uh, It's been the same for quite a while. It doesn't get increased. What what would trigger an increase, or wh where does that money come from in the first place? Um, by vote of the board of cemetery trustees, right. so we have that. Right. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah. It might have gone up once in ten years ago. Yeah. I don't remember. It's been a while. Yeah, I, I don't. It's, I don't think it's gone up since I've been here. It's been going twenty for quite a while. And then uh, lastly, so this is more of just an observation. So on the rubbish and recycling, so year to date, ninety six percent. Does that mean, are you going to hit the budget? Because it seems like it's a kind of a known number. That number is not changing. Uh, yeah, we know, we know what, what it is. Uh, we can we encumber, you know, the amount for the year, for the contract for the year. So basically, we've got X amount. We know what the contract's going to be, so we're, in, we're encumbered. So basically, we know we're going to spend X amount for the year out of the, up based on the contract. The, the, the unknown is kind of like the disposal because it's based on tonnage. Right. Actually, that you actually go through the, the process. Uh, of, of disposal from you know, month to month. And again, it doesn't fluctuate that much. It's pretty steady at 30% uh, with the recycling and the tonnage that goes through it for disposal. But the overall 96% is just incumbent for the for the year. That's what we're going to spend. Is it because you paid in advance right. any of them? Okay. We, we just incumbent. Okay, yeah. Okay. That's, thanks. Other questions? Okay. Eric? Yeah, just a couple. Um, are you where you want to be now with the licensing and your, your, your staff? You mentioned you've gone through an effort to get everybody kind of licensed stuff. Is there still a, a hill you need to climb there? Or we're, we're pretty, we're pretty, we're pretty good shape. I think some of the younger guys coming in, I think, uh, may uh, start maybe take advantage of some of the things. But no, I think we've got um, people with the right licenses, and uh, uh, some of the requirements the last year have changed. Uh, actually, I think it was is, it was more of a, I think it was a money maker for the state. But now they're requiring different licenses now for, and you've got every two years you've got to you know pay a fee to get your license uh, reinstated, and uh, you know all the guys, every everybody that comes in. It has to have a CDL to begin with, or get it within six months. So laborers come in, they get six months to get the CDL. The town pays for the for, for the cost; they pay for the license. Um, and then after you get your CDL, then there's funding available to get like a hoist's license to be able to operate a backhoe. And and it's progression. You can get different licenses. Um, we just had a, we've got like a number of people now over the last uh, what the year they actually have the Class A license, which is the toughest license you can get. You can drive the the, the, the trailers, the, actually tractor trailers, but you know the trailers you can drive. Um, and uh, we've got a bunch of people that have that now. And and, and what happens? What's happened to one case? Uh, one occasion that uh, this individual came in and he got his licenses, and then you know once you have that license, I mean that that that's big. And what happens is he gets offered a job someplace at you know substantial more money. You know, driving a truck for, for actually, I think he would have to work for Budweiser to <laughs> try, drive, drive one of their trucks. But that, on occasion, that could happen. But, but that's, that's, that, but overall, um, we're in pretty good shape with licenses. And guys are, are doing well. Um, I work for a big company, too. I understand the job. <laughs> I, I think, I think he said he gets, I think he says he gets two thirty packs. I don't know if that's true or not. Every, 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 every so often. But as long as he shares. Yeah. <laughs> um, you made at the selectmen, you had a slide that was titled, I think, Other Potential Reductions. You had a laundry list there that totaled about $60,000. Has there been any more discussion around uh, those items? Uh, really haven't talked too much about it. The only one we've talked about um, is the um, um, removal, uh, removal of uh, snow removal downtown. Um, again, that's a when we do that full blown removal of the contract, because that's like a $25,000 bill. I mean, it's it's like 12 guys at overtime, it's trucks, it's, it's back, I mean, it's, it's a big operation. Um, and uh, I mean, and that's all funded this year. I mean, the money's the budget for this year, we're talking about FY18, mm -hmm. would be one area that, as a service, that, you know, if that's to be looked at as possible reduction, I mean, that's, that's one that could be looked at. The other ones were more, I think, just to give it a, uh, everyone an idea of what some of these things cost. Um, I think just, to, I think one of them was putting up the lights outside here. For the man hours it takes to put up all the Christmas lights and take them all down. And then the day of the event, it was like, I want to say fifteen or $16,000. I mean, 
you know, uh, friends and family day. I have, I have four or five trucks there with guys for the day, blah, blah. That was like, I think, eight or 10,000. So, I mean, there's things that we do, and I mean, those, those things are in the budget now, but going forward, it might be things that we might have to, to look at in, in terms of things that are, you know, are nice to do, but uh, I think that's something that we, we, we have to do. Any other questions? No? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Thank you for now we're on 67. <laughs> <laughs> I want to introduce uh, Kevin Gabuzzi as our assistant director. Um, in, the in the back row there is Kevin Gersten. He's a uh, the facilities manager for the facilities department. He's in charge of the, all the school custodians. He works for the school department, just so you guys know that. An awesome person in the drama group, too. So. <laughs> okay, we'll get started. Um, so we're, in, we're on page 67, like Mark said. Um, the first page uh, gives you a general breakdown of the whole facilities budget, which is at 3.297, which is, represents a 4.9% increase uh, over last year. Uh, that has, the makeup of that increase has to do energy uh, with energy and one-time expenses for some work we're doing in some town buildings. That's the largest portion of it. Under salaries, you're going to see the next uh, grouping down for core facilities, which is uh, the core facilities department, is a 12.71% increase over last year. And that is represented by a, is made up of a new position that we're adding, um, a new maintenance technician, which will give us four staff in the facilities department. And I'll explain how we plan on um, paying for that. Town buildings budget is up in salary 6.31%. And that is um, a five thousand dollar increase for overtime, which is a one-time overtime um, expenditure to do some projects on the town side this coming up year. Down below, you're going to see the core facilities expenses are up three point three one percent. Town buildings are level funded. Below that, you're going to see a quick breakdown of all the buildings and. It's important to understand that the facilities department maintains 17 uh, buildings in the town of Reading, uh, nine schools and eight municipal buildings, totaling just about 1.1 million square feet of space. Um, we have a staff of a master electrician, a master plumber, a, and two carpenters, with one now and we're adding another one next week. Uh, the re remainder of the work is outsourced through service contracts, plumbing, uh, sorry, um, HVAC controls, HVAC, um, fire alarm, sprinkler, elevator services, a lot of the state mandated things we have to do are all outsourced. And there's the breakdown of the buildings by square footage below that. Just above, above this, uh, this section right here gives you a quick uh, idea of what we're all about in our mission statement. And then below that is our uh, org chart. So we have, on the, in the core facilities department, we have a director, assistant director, uh, four maintenance technicians, and a department secretary. The town part of my budget, the town facilities department, there's four full-time FTEs, uh, custodians that work in the town buildings. And then on the school side, which is not shown in this because I'm rep not representing that budget tonight, is 18.5 FTEs, uh, and that's including Kevin. Uh, and then we have a um, facilities rentals coordinator at point, that's at point six, okay? Below that, we gave you guys a quick breakdown of the number of work orders by location. Last year, we successfully completed 2,381 work orders in the town. And if you look, like a high school would be the largest number at 429. Um, and then trailing behind that, you can see buildings like Woodend, Parker, um, in Coolidge, you can see those numbers in Birch Meadow. These numbers don't necessarily represent breakdowns or um, problem buildings, but rather like the high school because it's the largest amount of mechanical equipment at that facility. And we have a pre preventive maintenance work order system that pops out work orders for us 
a lot of the work has been is dispatched to that location. So it gives, it gives you kind of it's inclusive of everything we do, whether it's repairs, whether it's deliveries. Um, it could be um, you know the elevator contractor come in to do his, his monthly PM on the, all the equipment in the town of Reading. <coughs> Page 69, it, it, this is a, sort of a flow chart to give you folks an idea of how we use technology within the uh, facilities department. <coughs> we, have, we utilize um, a computerized work order system um, to track and dispatch all of our maintenance te technicians as well as any outside trades contracts. Um, work <coughs> comes into the facilities department and it is um, dispatched through Kevin and myself to the, either the maintenance workers or to the outside contractors. In addition to that, we have a preventive maintenance program that also pro um, produces work orders um, in, in scheduled intervals for any kind of state mandated uh, repair uh, maintenance work that needs to be done, such as elevators, sprinklers, rooftop equipment, boilers. So we're able to track all of that all of that work that's going on in the department. We also just, um, this past, what was it, November, I believe it was, we launched um, the newest um, module, which is called Utility Track, and I had mentioned this at the Selectman's meeting. We're able to now track our utility consumption uh, and cost in real time, and we have all the town's buildings in Utility Track, and we've been uh, going, we've been using it since November. It's a great tool. If you look at the chart below, I know you guys don't have a, you're not in color like I am, but um, we are doing really well this year. A lot of it has to do with weather, but we are tracking below uh, the trend right now. We're trending below the last year. Um, this 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 will give us a, a real time history. This was by all three utilities you're looking at right here, but we can actually break it out by square footage and by different utility whether it be in kilowatt hours or um, natural gas consumption, whatever. So this gives us a great, and we'll be able to get better numbers. We'll, every, the question everybody's been asking me is, how's the new library doing to, compared to the old one? We'll be able to give you guys some good numbers next year after we have a full year in with the Reading Public Library, the new location, which is kind of exciting. So page 70, um, like I had mentioned in the first page, we're, we're, we have an overall inc increase of 4.9%. Uh, the next grouping below that will show you um, the um, maintenance staff. There's an increase of 107%, and that's the addition of the new, uh, newly hired maintenance technician, which is a master carpenter we're actually hiring. And also, uh, and maintenance overtime has been reduced because of we've, we felt that we could, with this extra person, we wouldn't need to use as much overtime. Below it, and I'm going to start explaining how we're going to be doing this. The next grouping below that, miscellaneous expenses is up 9.69%, and that's really a $2,500 increase in architectural fees. We do have professional services, architectural services that we use for consulting when we're doing bid specs for capital work or repairs that are out of, outside of our wheelhouse. Um, building repairs is down 3.8%. Other maintenance, I'm sorry, other maintenance and repairs, actually building repairs is down 3.84%. Extraordinary repairs is down 15.29%. And HVAC services is down 11.56%. So what we're, what we're planning on doing, and I'll, and I'll go back a couple years, we hired a master electrician in 2014, I believe it was. And before that, we were outsourcing all of our electrical services for the town of Reading. And at the time, I needed to prove that we could hire an electrician and make, this, make the cost close to zero for the town. I'll tell you that I was looking at the numbers that we were spending since 2009 up until now. And in one, one year back then, we spent almost $300,000 on electrical services. Now, that includes capital, okay? So there is capital money in there. But the last three years, the number has been down as low as $30,000 for outside electrical services, and that was small capital work. So the day-to-day -day work that comes into my office now, our office, we're able to use our master electrician to go out and do if simple stuff like relamping or actually fixing motor starters or whatever it might be within the town of Reading, paying someone 
three dollars an hour as opposed to prevailing wage which is ninety dollars an hour so the addition of this new person that I'm talking about we've reduced all these lines worked closely with Bob and John Doherty figuring out where we could have some get some savings right now because we only have three maintenance technicians in the in the department we're finding that our master electrician and master plumber are doing things like door work um, ceiling tile replacement lock set work all the general maintenance and repair and that we're pulling them off of what their core mission is our goal is with this new person is to get a lot of that door work and a lot of the other things that we do back into our department so that we number one don't have to outsource that through an outside contractor and giving the plumber and the electrician more time to go out and diagnose problems because the minute we call an HV, our HVAC vendor in it costs us it's around hundred dollars an hour we're paying to get someone out here we've been testing this out over the last few months and we're having good success with it but what happens is you fall behind on the other work so we're confident that we will see the same type of savings that we experience with the electrical contractor going forward so that's how we plan on doing it the extraordinary repair expenses the other thing to keep uh, keep in mind too is that um, because we have a solid preventive maintenance program we we believe and we do know that that's the key to having avoiding breakdowns you're always going to have them but if you're maintaining your equipment really well then you're going to reduce the emergency repairs that happen Good. At least just because it's on that point, I was trying to get back to the. It looks like it's an incremental sixty. So if I look at that line, uh, what, where are you? Uh, I'm sorry. So I'm on page seventy. Yep. Lice. I'm sorry. What's the line? Maintenance staff. Mm -hmm. That's where the extra master carpenter or the, 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 the maintenance staff would be, right? Correct. So I was trying to get back to that sixty, and I could only get halfway there, and I just wasn't sure where the rest was. Uh, and I got halfway there in the table below from the building repairs line the other maintenance and repairs after you exclude the one-time um, project that's in there mm -hmm. and the extraordinary repairs that's 10 11 and 10 so i got halfway to 60 i just couldn't find that other 30. yeah our goal is to is to extend that even further in the out in the out years uh, okay. HVAC also. yeah it's That's three it's three areas actually oh well, thanks bob yeah it's hvac it's extraordinary repairs and it's building repairs. So that, with HVAC, it gets a lot closer. Okay. And I think we can exceed that if we, if, but we, we just need, we need the opportunity to get, you know, get this person in here. Okay. Sorry. Can I jump ahead for a sec just to the elevator one? Do we have more elevators? Is there a new elevator at the library or something? Yeah. That's what it is? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. Yeah. I was happy to see that you think the pests are under control. Yes. One good thing. So page 71, um, under miscellaneous expenses, like I mentioned in the previous um, slides, um, the architectural fees are up um, $2,500. And an example of that is where we, we would use the architects um, to do a design. We have to replace some, <coughs> the, some of the skylights at the Wood End Elementary School, and we're going to have to have a design done for that. We noticed some stress cracks that's normal, it's just normal in New England to have this happen with the design. So we do use people like that to come in, professional engineers and things like that. We need additional funding. Our electricity and then utility expenses are up 5% across the board for all the town and school buildings on page 71. Some of the things we do to fight, to fight you know, an increase in consumption is um, it, well, you can tell we just installed these uh, high-efficiency LED lights in here. We got a grant through, um, we worked with um, Julie Mercier, I believe it's a 20000 it's $20,000 total, and we did all the common area lighting in the town hall. We did this space you're in right now, and we did the selectmen's meeting room, and we're going to be doing across the hall and maybe even the two other offices, and that'll finish this part of it. And our goal is to grab even more areas. We also did... Over the summer, we did the um, Joshua Eaton, uh, all the main corridors in that particular facility, uh, and we saw a reduction in our consumption with the electricity over there. So, you know, we're, at all times, we're trying to manage that budget, and it's a moving target, and that's one of the big, th big things that Kevin does is manage the energy management of all the buildings. We're constantly in that program looking at ways to, to save money but keep the buildings comfortable. 
like on a day like today, <clears throat> we were messing with the outside reset on the boilers because, you know, normally the boilers will come on if, if it's lower than 45 degrees. So we turned, the, turned them up a little bit so that we, there's no sense in heating the water up if it's 60 degrees outside. So we do tweak it to get the optimal run time and also to save energy on the, on the, uh, on the energy management. So look just for a second, the library electricity, um, is that just square footage? It jumps from 2016, it's like, well, 30, 20, 16, and then it jumps to 50, or 2017, and the same thing for 2018. Well, the yes. library, I'm 71. The library uh, is bigger now. Yeah. Okay. And also, because of the new energy requirement, well, the, the new fresh air requirements for these new buildings, there's a lot more moving parts in, this, in that building to provide fresh air yeah, in the... It, air handling. Correct. You're supposed to provide three air changes per hour in a commercial building or a school building, so we're, that's part of it. So that old building didn't really, you know, the, we would open it. the windows yeah. to get that fresh air, you know, for instance. Right. <laughs> Hopefully we don't have to. So. Any other questions on that? So page 72, um, again, natural gas. And water and sewer are both up 5% over last year. Is that, sorry, Joe, the library, is that the same story? That yes. The natural gas number for the library is way up. Uh, yep, and I, and. Like way up. It's, it's based on square footage. So you're not comparing it to last year when we were yeah, close, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, no, I'm looking at, um, so in fiscal 15, it was $8,600. We weren't, they weren't there. We weren't there. Uh, right. Right. So. Got it. Yes, we were. Okay. So yes. it's still, yeah, it's sorry, twenty-two. Yes. So it's twenty-two to thirty-two. Yep. Okay. Thank you, Emma. Does this assume level rates, or is it based on usage? Um, right now we're paying six six dollars thirty-eight cents per decatherm. Right now, uh, we have a. Uh, a, a three-year agreement with the Traditions Energy for our natural gas, and we're being told that um, the 5% increase is, with, is good with RMLD also as far as, uh, and they're the cheapest rates in the state from what we know. Okay. At the bottom of the page there, um, we're reducing the um, building repair expenses by four percent and again a lot of this has to do with what we had spoke about in the previous slides you know getting a lot of this work done in-house okay so on page 73 um, you're gonna see some reductions in um, other maintenance and repair across the board at all the uh, town and the school buildings. Town Hall, you're going to see that there's a um, $25,000 one-time expense for some project work we're going to be doing in the Town Hall, as well as um, the Senior Center, and then the Police Station. And it's important to note that the uh, Town Hall and uh, Senior Center projects will be holdbacks for the school budget. And below that, we have our extraordinary uh, maintenance repair reduced by 15%. Are those uh, identified repairs already, or is that a budget? They are, what, they are exactly what they are, extraordinary repair. They could be a, a breakdown of a compressor. could be something that it's... A boiler, yeah. A boiler yeah, like exactly. Replaced, Got it. A boiler section. Right. So it's, it's a budget in case exactly. expecting right. extraordinary things. Worst case scenario. Building. Okay. You Got see it. that in variability. Mm -hmm. So page 74, um, the uh, electrical expenses, um, the alarm expenses, and the fire equipment expenses are all level funded. <coughs> so 
and on page 75, uh, the HVAC expenses at the top, again, um, have been reduced by just under 12%. And then the other, and I know it doesn't show up, but those are all level funded, the uh, elevator, pest management, and the plumbing expense lines. So the last page is the uh, town facilities budget which is level funded other than the custodial overtime, which is that one time $5,000 overtime to assist us with some projects at town hall that we're thinking about doing here, which is gonna be painting and wayfinding signage throughout the town hall. <coughs> Questions? Um, on the school side, there's a reduction of the cleaning contract for the high school. It's not, you didn't talk about it. Oh. But yeah, right. Yeah, that $80,000 that 80, reduction in the cleaning contract yep. for the high school. Mm -hmm. Is there any opportunity for cities like that with the cleaning contracts and any other buildings? Um, well, the only – so we, we outsource cleaning at the high school and the, and the Coolidge Middle School, and there's an $80,000 reduction in that. And the way we're getting to, so you know, the way we're getting to that number is we're going to reduce the, the frequency, cleaning frequencies and then shift some of that cleaning back onto the nighttime custodial staff at the high school. So that's how we're going to get to that. It, the level of cleaning won't be the same. The building won't have the same high shine that it has in the morning right now. We, we actually got a great new contractor over there. Um, so it's, it's kind of unfortunate that we are doing that. But... We'll have a clean building. It's just not going to sparkle every morning. So the answer to your question on the town side, is there opportunities like that? Um, there is always opportunities. It's something I don't like to do. I don't like cutting cleaning. But if we had to do it, we, we could. Um, but something will suffer. And, and it could be in the, in the frequencies of the cleaning in the buildings, such as, you know, maybe you don't get, um, you know, the floors polished at the senior center every night or you go to an alternate night cleaning schedule at the police station for instance but I don't think the chief would like that too much <laughs> um, <Sorry. yeah. laughs> we're in a good place right now actually with you know with the outsource cleaning over there um, and we have a good crew of guys and I will say that we're not overstaffed we're, we're, we're pretty much getting probably six eight thousand square feet per hour out of each one of those people cleaning production so it's it's a tough thing I mean it, it depends what really what's the what is the level of expectation that you want in the buildings what people want what are they expecting to see when they walk in the door you know our buildings get used a lot that's the other thing so they're in high demand and high use This has been, you said you just put in place the utility Utility track. track. Yeah, there was another, we got, yep, utility track is the newest one. Okay. Yep. Okay. But the, the whole suite here, how long have you been using that? A few years? Is We're one of the first clients of this company called School Dude, and we've been using it since 2000. I came on board in 06. They bought it in 05, so we've been using it now 12 years. Okay. And we started out with the work order system at first, and then we, then we went to the preventive maintenance module. And then we went into um, the facility scheduling automation module, which the school department uses. And actually, we're hoping to get the town on that also to, for their buildings. Then FS Direct is another new one we just <coughs> launched, which ties the rental of a building in with the energy management system, which means, for instance, they had the play last weekend at the high school, which we're using. When they rented the space, it automatically turned the energy management on and occupied it so that you don't have two steps, you have one step. Mm -hmm. If something gets canceled, it shuts it down also. Snow day, for instance. Yeah. So That's integrated right in. It's all integrated. Yeah. It's all integrated, yeah. I don't know if you've done any work to quantify the benefit of having this, you know, the, the, the reduction in otherwise expense, you know, expenses you would have otherwise incurred if we hadn't had this technology. It'd be interesting to know. 
is there still other modules or other possibilities or, or more, more runway I, here with, with, with opportunities with Well, technology? I'm working really closely with the Permanent Building Committee, and we talked about our inventory of all of our assets in the buildings, all of our equipment, and uh, Kevin and I were, and the two Kevins and I were talking about that today, about, you know, every, everything we have is cataloged in School Dude, so we know how many pieces of equipment, for instance, are at Killam, for instance. So, to do a building assessment, is, which is one of their charges to do that, you need to have a good inventory of what you have in the building so that you can age the stuff out and you can help you, it helps build the capital plan. I use that right now, but I have never done a formal building assessment. So, that technology is, is, be, is being, it's being used right now by them so that we can, you know, be, get a better idea on what the, you know, what the grading of the building is it, is it like, Red light, which is really bad. Yellow, which is you know, eh, or green, meaning really good condition. So, um, so we are using the technology. I think the energy management and the critical alarm automation, which is a warning device that for all our building buildings to tell us if there's issues, are the most useful ones right now. And the utility, they're all great. The utility tracking software is tremendous. So, school dude, dude. Yeah. The, yeah, it's a, it's something that was rolled out with the specific purposes of schools to use, but Reading was one of their first customers, and we use it in town in school buildings also. So it's it's across both. They have a different name. It's called Maintenance Edge, I believe it's called, but for the, for the municipal buildings, but we use it for both. Yeah. So. You guys should be a good reference. Hopefully they could just take this down. We are, actually, because yeah. we, have, we, have we have a lot of their stuff. Right. Yeah. Says that. Beginning FY FY17, annual annual budgeting for the category has changed based on general building size and other expenses. Yeah. 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 Ye
And again, like I think Joe said earlier, uh, the work order doesn't necessarily mean that there was a maintenance issue there. It could be a, a delivery for the courier. Right. It could be something that simple. Yeah. Okay. Um, my other question is on page 73 when we talk about the um, holdbacks for the school budget, there's the town hall project and the senior center projects. Uh, what are those, and is there any concern or consequence of putting these off by a year, assuming that they can be done in this town this hall project? Is 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 basically is painting is painting in the town okay. hall to get common area painting done, and, and it, it, that's probably as much as it's going to be able to do, okay. as well as some new signage, the senior center, and again, this could change a little bit with the town manager as well as you know. Um, it, but we, the senior center was more or less going to be carpeting up on the second floor and some new furniture up there. We want to replace the carpet with carpet squares, which is what we're using in all our buildings, which it's simple. It's easier to replace if you have a stain, and it's just simpler to, it's a faster install. Okay. So essentially no potential concern for... Yeah. yeah. Whereas Thank the you. police station project, I would have a concern if we delayed that. Yeah. Okay. The other two are uh, not have to have, the, you know what I mean? They're improvements to the building, but it's not going to affect the, the function. Okay, great. Thank you. You're welcome. David. Just two quick ones. Um, on the software, and I apologize, I may have missed this. Where does that budget sit? Where did that cost come from? That comes out of technology. 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 Yeah, technology. Oh, okay. okay. Um, and then um, uh, this is more general question. Do we... What do we do about renewable energy programs for municipal? Is that something we looked at? Is that something could interest a town? We, what are your thoughts? We looked at um, solar a few years ago, um, but the school buildings and the town buildings don't really have enough real estate on the rooftops to be able to accommodate anything like that to make it worthwhile for, a, for the payback. Um, because a lot of the equipment on the or take up, the, the equipment takes up so much space on the roof of our buildings, and we also don't have any land close to the building to utilize it. Um, we did when we did the performance contracting initiative with Noresco, we did solar domestic hot water systems at the two fire stations and the police station, and we have a solar preheat system at the high school that um, is along the wall facing the auditorium that preheats the air coming into the air handles that control, um, that are for the media center. So Is that working well for us? It works really well, yeah. yeah. And it's, it, what that basically does is on a zero degree day, you could have air inside that preheat panel that's around 65, 70 degrees. So when the, when the unit turns on, it's not heating it from zero to 100, it's 60 to 100. There's a savings. Yeah, um, if I could also add, for those of you that weren't here when uh, performance contracting was done at the town meeting, if you look at the debt schedule, we're paying half a million dollars on energy improvements through about FY 20 something, and then it drops to 300,000 through 25. Um, that was in order to break even with his budget for that period of time. After that, whatever energy savings that remain, which you'll never really be able to identify, are free. The upfront capital cost. I, I can't remember the break even was somewhere between 12 and 15 years. It was, it was 15, 15, yeah. so 15 yep. years. 15 years. And the town was unusual in using its own debt to do that instead of doing a lease or some internal financing. So you can see the cost of debt. Otherwise, it would have been all buried and his budget would have been higher all along until FY25. But our, our borrowing rate was much cheaper than what the, what the lender and what they're doing. So there was a hidden cost in a different budget in order to relieve the operating budget for a period of time. By the way, when you look at all these line items, you would never think his budget comes just to three million. Oh. <laughs> 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 well, detail. I should have said that out. <laughs> Which is great. <laughs> Other well, questions? I'm interested whether you think town meeting needs all this, because I think it was important for you to see it, but honestly, if you look at it, the difference at the building level for each of those expense lines? You guys can decide. But on the
on the other hand, this budget, I forget the number of pages, half what it was last year for space. So mm -hmm. I didn't yeah. feel too bad handing all this out. I, to me, the, this, your, your summaries are what should be in the presentation, and then everything else goes to an appendix. And sits in the back. I, that's my. Favorite. Yeah, we don't really have an appendix, but I certainly take your point. Yeah. I would also add that for some of these sections that have, you know, we're looking at 2.9 million, 500,000. It is nice to see the breakdown, but for the miscellaneous expenses, yeah. I mean, we're talking about twenty-eight thousand dollars. Right. I. You know, some of these are a thousand and two thousand dollars. A summary there might <coughs> answer that just as well. Okay. And just so you know, the reason we need to do of this is on the end of the year school report, right? But that doesn't mean you have to see it or town meeting has to see it. <coughs> Maybe some of the, like Vanessa mentioned, you could probably whack a couple of these. Yeah. Yep. How much time are town meeting members given to process this and the, and this 100 pages? And <coughs> three weeks. That's fair. I won't tell you how many picked up the night before or on the way. <laughs> They're all watching us right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's not quite triple digits, but. <laughs> Any other questions, comments? No? Great. Thanks, guys. This is Thank uh, you. very Thank good, you. very easy to read. Thank you. Seven in the middle is different. The actual combined rate increase is 3.3 percent for next year, not 3.7 percent. Used a little more reserves, so I just wanted to let you know about that. Um, also, just in housekeeping on the general fund, the finance department is being rearranged. That was also voted last night by the selectmen in the classification plan. Our treasurer collector resigned, and her last day was last week. Uh, we have split the treasurer collector job into two, a treasurer and a collector. They, there's all kinds of responsibilities. I can give you guys a memo. The bottom line of the wage budget and finance will be the same, but there'll just be some pieces moving around. Um, if those pieces move around quickly enough, then town meeting will see the revised budget. And I'm not concerned whether they do or not, of, you know, because the bottom line is the same. It's within 500 or 800 dollars, and it's less. So I, I just just did one. Um, on 77, we start with the enterprise funds. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I think I really start on 77 at the bottom. It's a little hard to read some of these charts when they're in black and white. It's turning out, but uh, that's a remarkable amount of less water used over the last 12 years, from uh, 780,000 down to 630,000. Uh, 100 cubic feet per day is quite a change. And bear in mind that's at a time when the population and housing in the town has increased. Um, so the, the amount of conservation continues to be impressive. Um, the reason that's important is because we have certain fixed expenses in water and sewer that have to be paid. And when your usage goes down, the cost per unit goes up. Some of that's good because you're spending less money to you know, buy water from the impact water. But it is somewhat of a double edged sword. On 78, the uh, rate increase again will go slightly lower in FY18, it was shown to 3.3%. But two years ago, the 10% discount was eliminated, which is you know, showing a slightly artificial number there. The underlying was around 3%. Except for 2013, since we joined the MWRA and a couple of years after that, uh, 
the annual increases have been south of five percent, somewhere between three and five. You actually usually four to five. And then that blip in 2013 was a usage adjustment. There was so much conservation we hadn't realized for a year or two that we really just slipped behind. And one year we had, either we had or we almost had a revenue deficit. I, I don't remember. It was really close, though. So we had to make that change. But I have to say, going back to the decision to join the MWRA, I was, I was at best on the fence. Uh, I understood from a management standpoint it was a much better idea to have someone else take over your problems and poisoning your population with water, and you didn't do it. Um, but in terms of cost, I really thought the MWA would be more expensive, and it definitely has not been. So from a cost standpoint, it's really worked out well. Um, water and sewer are things that we have a slight amount of control uh, over the prices by infrastructure planning, but we also have to do a certain amount of infrastructure planning. We, we can't do none. Um, as we've done um, this uh, peer economic development uh, project, with, our, with 25 communities. One of the surprising results, which I really didn't think about and, and maybe should have, is that our infrastructure is in such good shape that if we only had vacant land, we could you know, do a lot of economic development. You know, uh, nothing against North Reading to our north, but they don't have sewer, and they have very limited capacity for water, which is why they need to join the MWA, and they have plenty of vacant land. <laughs> Life is ironic sometimes. I could trade. Yeah, or take them over. Did I say that? <laughs> um, so, you know, our, our infrastructure is really important because we can do a certain amount of economic development, and our infrastructure will not prohibit it, which is really good news. Um, 79 is really just a worksheet. The, the takeaway is I think the community should pretty much expect 5% rates forever, or at least through uh, when our uh, MWA buy-in runs out, which is another 10 years. Um, but we are much more susceptible to rates in sewer because that budget is 75% MWA charges. We can't do anything about it. They're gonna charge us what they charge us. Um, there is a forecast in the future for the MWA rates to start going up on sewer to the seven to nine percent area, and if that happens, we can't keep sewer rates locally down to five. We don't have enough leverage. Uh, to take you through the actual budget, it's really not all that interesting. It starts on page 80. see that we, we like to group things in salaries and expenses like in the general fund. Um, water and sewer and storm water now have one additional category called general fund support. Um, that's the amount of money that the enterprise funds pay to support the general fund. So for instance, some portion of my salary is paid for by water and sewer. And back when I was on the finance committee, dinosaurs walked the earth. Um, the DOR let you offset, you'd, you'd show Bob's salary, water pays this, sewer pays that, general fund pays the rest. It was very transparent. I liked it. Um, at some point in the last 10 years, the DOR said, you can't do that anymore, it's not legal. Um, you must show the full cost of Bob's salary and the general fund must pay for it. Because what if water and sewer suddenly didn't pay for it, the general fund would have to unless you only take two thirds of Bob or whatever. And so the logic made sense, but it's not as transparent. And I know Sharon spoke about this the other night in terms of, you know, if you eliminate a person in finance, it's not the full salary because you're going to lose revenue. So some of that revenue um, that you see uh, is our MLD water, sewer, and the um, stormwater fund paying. And this is just where that line of item is. You can see general fund support. And, and generally speaking, the general fund support goes up by the operating budget. So one and a quarter percent is roughly what those targets are for this year. <clears throat> Where we have a great deal of control, usually, is capital and debt. Um, you know, for the water buy-in, we don't have a lot of control over that, but we have some flexibility, and that's how we can help manage rate increases. So you can see in the upcoming year, our local costs, in other words, everything excluding the MWA is actually almost minus 5%. Uh, the MWA forecast right now is pretty high. I don't think it'll come in that high. It's 8.9%. They won't tell us possibly as late as July. Um, but even so, uh, the selectmen last night voted to use 600,000, not 500,000 of water reserves. So the net water budget is up somewhere just under 4%. Um, looking down at the bottom of 80, there's no change in staffing. Um, there is some change of 
professional qualifications of the staff, which sometimes allows them to earn more money. Uh, there's really nothing that I see there that's honestly especially interesting. Um, it, it is worth saying, and, and Jeff and I sometimes chuckle about this, that when the snowstorms, sometimes people say, can't send out the water department now to do a shift. The water department has already been out there from the beginning. You know, this, yeah, that's right. That's his backup room. You know, all of DPW generally goes out on a storm. You know, 40 odd people. Um, there, there's not this mystical second and third shift that can come out and relieve the first shift. They, they are all needed. Um, <clears throat> on page 81, you see some of the expenses in water. The retirement assessment is back to going up four and a half percent. There's been some sort of ups and downs. You can see on actuals that's taken a big jump. And that's all the actuaries doing whatever it is actuaries do. Um, health insurance premiums, this number is still sort of a higher assumed increase, but we've also seen more employees taking health insurance in this budget than had previously done so. Um, see if there's anything else that really jumps out. I really don't think so. How about the uh, OPEP contribution? Is their share of the 500 or? Is no, that that's, a well, that's a, a separate, separate 50. And sewer has a separate number and okay. stormwater and the light department all have separate numbers. And I don't remember Sharon, is that a twenty year schedule? It's a twenty year schedule. I think it's eighteen actually. So they're they're into I've uh, gotta be three or four or five years by now. I'm sorry? They, they have to be, I don't know, four years into it by mm -hmm. now. So mm -hmm. it was a twenty year schedule. Okay. So that'll you know drop down to some lower amount after another fifteen years. Um, they have a closed schedule because they're funding their arc in yeah. the required contribution. On the b bottom of 81 is the detail of that um, support that shows you the dollars where they go. That's 560,000 that was on the top of page 80. Um, you know, over the t over time we've rearranged kind of the departments and some of the reasons. You know, finance used to have finance and accounting, so that's why there's kind of different lines. <clears throat> but you get a sense of um, you know money going to different departments, and there's a pretty carefully crafted formula that, that Sharon has. Eighty-two in very small print is the debt and capital of water. You, you, you can see, though, at the very top that the uh, the buy-ins end in FY twenty-seven. And if you jump down to the bottom or middle section, um, you know the buy-ins are about six hundred thousand a year right now, so that'll go away, which is nice. Uh, and then we'll always have more water main projects to do. Um, there is pretty much we wanted to map it all out, honestly, there's 50 years worth of work that we could identify right now in sewer, and probably about the same in water. And the amount of money is somewhat staggering if you assume inflation. That's why we only look at 10 years or so. But the capital plan for water and sewer are very carefully planned. When we can afford to do it a little faster, we will, but much more often the case is we have to slow it down. We just can't afford it. To do a capital improvement the way you might have originally identified would cost 10% instead of 5 then unless it's urgent, we just don't do it. Um, debt NI is debt no interest? Um, that's not issued yet. Oh, not issued. Okay. Um, it's, just, it's hidden at the very top. Um, oh, I see it. Debt, no, sorry. Debt not issued, yeah. debt not authorized or approved. So there is Thank one you. sewer project that's coming to a town meeting in April that's not yet authorized. And once it is, then we'll borrow money. Um, Towards the end of the fiscal year, so that's why some stuff's not issued yet, especially um, in other budgets in the general fund. Uh, Eighty-three is sewer, somewhat of a similar story. Um, local costs in this case are much higher because we are using more capital and debt, and thus the use of sewer reserves this year where there was none in the past year in seventeen. So you, you can see a jump of 550,000 in sewer debt and capital. About 450,000 of that, if you will, is offset by the use of reserves. 100,000 is absorbed by the rate phase. Um, a 2.86 you know, percent budget isn't bad. And this MWA number is really good. It's just 1.4 percent. And obviously, you can see that's a much bigger number than in water. It's for almost five million dollars. When this number starts jumping up closer to you know seven, eight, ten percent, then it's going to have to affect rates. There's really nothing to do about that. 
It's a big change in OPEX that took place in 17. Where are you looking? Sewer, 83. Where, whereabouts? Uh, the third line, OPEX, so 40, 150, 166, 122, and then it's 273 and 245. Well, let me look on this page. Uh, no change in staffing on the bottom of 83. Let's see if we can answer Mark's question on 84. Uh, yeah, Inflow, infill, oh, I, I know why. The others are actuals to the left. Yeah, it's I and I. Um, it's I and I. So Got I it. think every year we've budgeted 100,000, just haven't always used it. I'm sure the year we spent for 54, we budgeted more. It's really some really low years there. That's that's one of the dangers of kind of using actuals and budget. It kind of can give you a little bit of a mislead. Whereas if you had all budgets, you'd know what that meant. But right, very you caught a good subtle change. Bottom of the page is support, just like water. And uh, next, I think it's two pages, maybe is debt, not just one. Wow. So you will see a request um, in two parts at town meeting. And I think I'm going to, I gave to the selectmen last night the budget amendments for the current year with a $100,000 estimate for snow and ice. Um, I may as well just send that to you now rather than wait till after you're done with school budget. You can start reading it over. Okay. Um, we're proposing to use, I think it's 170000 of free cash in April if the schools go ahead with 150000 of curriculum. Um, so, you know, not too bad. Um, lastly, storm water. Um, this will be a discussion at some point in the next couple of years philosophically. Uh, it is still pretty much operating the way it was set up at approximately the same spend rate, although this is a really good example of the budgets versus the costs have been much different. So if you look at stormwater operations actuals, you see 160, 80, 70,000. Um, a lot more funding was budgeted for um, drainage maintenance. If you look in the middle of 86, you'll see six, seven, six thousand. Um, a lot more was budgeted and just not used. So again, the, the budget and thus the rate charged to the residents was higher and the reserve fund has grown because it was not used. So you can see this current year and next year we're proposing to use a chunk of those reserves to do projects, which otherwise we couldn't keep the $40 fee to do. So it, it kind of worked out, I guess, in a way. But there are specific projects identified in this budget. You can see them on page 87. Um, this current year, Jeff mentioned uh, Bond Street and Grove Street. Next year, we decided to just split a vacuum truck with the sewer department and push the projects out a year, but um, there's a million and three quarters and three drainage projects starting in FY19. The, um, the fund at $40 can't do that, can't pay for that. So it's a question of do you do it inside the levy, do you not do the work at all, or do you increase the fee? I don't really know if there's a fourth choice, but those are the three I see. So the selectmen will be discussing that. At the bottom, those river projects have been on there for seven or eight years. I, I don't mind if they're always on there. We keep pushing them out five years, but I'm not sure there's a point. At some, at some point, someone ought to do something about that. Um, I don't know. I don't know where to start. I just don't. I don't even know how they ever got on the list. Who knows? But it's silly to keep putting them on there. And I, I, I know the one background I know from this is that if we weren't going to have our neighbors cooperate and do their share of when the river returns into Wakefield, for instance, it was much less point doing the work. And the chance of getting that cooperation is not high. And uh, last night, the selectmen voted to keep the stormwater at the same, 40 bucks. Um, so that's Enterprise Fund's kind of a quick tour, 3.3% combined rates in water and sewer and then stormwater. Question on 82, yeah. uh, Bear Hill storage tank. $2 million removed pending MWRA second connection. Is yeah, there's a lot of sort of balls in the air, I'll say, in water. Um, and they're all directly or indirectly related to the North Reading buy-in, so pieces of negotiations. Um, we also have a tank up on Auburn. You can right. see it listed as $3.5 million for 10 years, starting in FY20. That would be to tear down the existing tank and put up a brand new one. 
more expensive than painting, but in my opinion, much more cost effective than painting every 10 or 12 years. That's a discussion to be had in the future. Uh, you will see a request at April town meeting. I, I think it's for 150,000, I'm not sure, to have a, a consultant step in and do an estimate and a design of a cell tower and to flesh out the cost for this if we need it. So that isn't necessarily directly related to the MWRA, um, but if North Reading wants water, somebody's gonna pay. <laughs> Somebody we, we have expenses. We had to pay a much higher fee for the buy-in than North Reading will pay. We'll make sure to get that back one way or the other. Um, you know, North Reading, uh, MWA is still looking for storage in the area. Um, you know, we have a Bear Hill tank we've talked to them about. We've, we've not had formal neighborhood meetings, but sort of informal discussions. And, um, you know, if, if the MWA wanted to take that over and build a slightly larger one, I don't know that we'd object at this point. It takes away a cost, a maintenance item for us. I don't think Peter's concerned for, for any reason that we lose one of our tanks at this point for the you know, fire stain thing. So that's specifically the redundancy they're doing yeah. the work. Yeah, once they get the stoner connection done. So there's there's really a lot of balls in the air, I guess I'll say, because related to water and most of it's related to North Reading. And the endeavor is highly aware of all these. Okay. Other questions? I, I just have a question on how to read this table on eighty two um, in general. Maybe you just can help me quickly. So starting from the top, so 2.6 in 2017, capital debt, that's fine. 990 on capital, then come down all the way to water debt. Um, so that's the debt we're taking in to satisfy the budget in 2017. Yeah, um, this, you, can, you see we went to the portrait, is this portrait? Um, instead of landscape, it kind of jams in too much on this page. I'll say it probably should be two pages. But broadly speaking, a capital plan is supposed to show everything you're doing, including stuff that's not paid by cash, by debt financing. So you see stuff listed as debt. Then the debt service schedule is the detail of just the debt portion of your capital plan. You know, this all looks like one page. It's really a capital plan and a debt schedule mashed together. Okay. Um, one could imagine a more sensible approach is just list the cost of everything, whether it's debt or capital, who cares? But the technicality on that top is important for uh, for the rating agencies. But you are meant to look at the line that says water capital nine ninety and water debt sixteen hundred. Add them together, you get the number at the very top two point six million, and so on across the lines. And then the repayment of principal, and that's just a detail that probably no one really needs. It just it's more interesting in the general fund. Um, you see all the different schools we've done. You see when they finally get paid off, how much interest you pay. The town used to spend a lot more money on interest. Uh, honestly, I think that's a detail that town meeting doesn't need, but I, I think you guys don't mind. I guess my question was more around, this is not new debt because it, it looks like Almost none of it is new. Yeah, um, it looks like you're just earmarking that how much is coming from yeah, each different Yeah, most countries. of that is issued. So if you look at the top and you see that just it says debt that's issued and perhaps long ago. Mm -hmm. The debt NI is not yet issued. It's authorized though. So that water main phase will be issued as soon as we get to the sewer authorization at April town meeting. Okay. And we're projecting that to be $449,800 in FY18. Once we sell the debt, we'll know what it really costs and you know, can make adjustments as we need. And then, so what's the reason for the numbers growing until 2023 and then declining after that? Well, you can see some debt service dropping off in, two, in 22. It's small print, but the 185 and the 20,000 both disappear. The, generally speaking, there's two kinds of debt you can issue. There's declining total cost debt, which is usually level principal or this level debt service, which is much more uncommon in municipal finance. Let's see if we have any of those here. We did, we did that for schools. Yeah, most of this is level principal, so debt service over time for everything declines. Okay. So in general, your debt service, unless you're adding new debt, declines. Which we're not. It only goes up when you're adding new debt, which we are doing in FY18, um, but not, not anywhere else on this plan. Uh, actually, that's not true. The Auburn tank in uh, FY21 is, uh, is new, or no, I'm sorry, that's meter replacements. The tank was one year sooner, FY20. 
But those are all the pieces of why the totals behaves the way they do. It, again, in water and sewer, it's honestly, I don't think it's that interesting, but in the general fund, it's really helpful, I think, to see school projects or building projects and when they're paid off for fire trucks. Mm -hmm. And then you get a better sense of now we have room for something else because we finished paying off this. Whereas this just isn't as interesting, I guess. Anything else? Questions? All right. Next, should we chat a little bit about the cohesion plan? I'll do the introduction at the end. Um, there's just kind of a couple things I want to say to wrap up. And I'll I'm loosely speaking off of page 10, starting on 10. I hope you read um, you know, a few of these pages because they summarize some of the things you heard. You know, sometimes it's better to read it in advance, sometimes after it's more important. I don't, I don't know. Um, but I wanted to especially highlight page 11, the third paragraph. Um, you know, the math suggested we, we eliminate a certain amount of positions in the budget this year, but we did 50% more. <clears throat> and the reason we did that is, first of all, it was an opportunity with um, retirements to do it. You heard, particularly in police and fire, why a vacancy is an important time to make that decision, because the hiring process is so long. Um, so you just got to jump on it. Um, but this allows me to look at our employees and say, if we don't have more funds for the next two years, we should be okay for layoffs. I thought that was a really, and John and I have talked about this. He's got his own story. Uh, but I thought it was important to be able to try to do that and eliminate more positions this year. So you see, we're doing things like projects. Well, if you're doing 25,000 of painting in town hall, couldn't you have just hired a cop? Well, sure. At some point, if I put enough of those together, I could have. And then I'm going to be laying the cop off next year, whereas I can just not do those projects in the second year. And we won't really have even had the police officer because it'll take 12 months to hire them and pay them to not be here yet. So that's the reason for it, um, is we really do have to kind of look further down the road in most of our staffing decisions and not just look short term. Um, it, it is a philosophical difference with the town and the schools, and this has gone back a couple of superintendents, um, to be, I, I don't really mean to quote all of them, but they look at school years. If I can accomplish X in this school year, I want to do it, period. I can't look at it the same way. It's not the same thing. I can't say, I want to spend this much on police officers this year. I want to do it. I have to look at a much longer continuum and realize, you know, they rightly look at, if I can help one child during that year, I want to do this thing. Okay. That's not how the town can operate. Um, we just have a different philosophy. I mean, have talked about it a lot. It's, it's, it's not right and wrong, obviously. It's just different. But you have to understand the difference. So our wage planning looks further down the road on purpose. Um, <clears throat> we, we do a fair amount of planning. Um, it's been discussed. I hope you saw this in advance. All of our collective bargaining agreements are up on June 30th. Um, this budget makes an assumption of COLA increases for all of them that I obviously can't tell you, and it's not the same for every union. Every union has a different circumstance with steps. Um, the cost of living increase for non-union was three quarters of a percent. Um, you know, in a one and a quarter percent operating budget, it certainly wasn't going to be more than that. We did uh, plan to allocate pay and class funds in April town meeting. We had money this year to spend. We are spending all but twenty-three thousand. I, I think we had one hundred twenty-five or so to start. Uh, actually, it was less than that. I think it was one hundred five. So we're spending all but 20, say 25,000. Um, it was important to do that. So in that sense, we are making a choice to eliminate some positions and pay some people more than we otherwise might have had to do. Um, there's no sense. In, we have, we're back up to about 20 vacancies. Uh, morale isn't bad, but opportunities are good other places. <laughs> so you know, people are not unhappy here, and all of a sudden they disappear. That's just happened treasurer many years here just left with three weeks notice for another community. She'll be she'll maybe making more have having a much bigger staff and having less work to do. That's our competition. You know, we do the best we can. Um, but we 
were not able to p complete the pay in class gap fixing. I'm satisfied we did a really nice job. Um, we accomplished maybe 80% of what we wanted to do, and in this environment, that's fine. No, I have no problem with that at all. I would not look to make any changes on that for, for a while. Um, additional money coming into the town would absolutely be spent on new positions or restoring old positions, not on paying people. We're, we're okay with that now. <coughs> Um, you heard some things, and you may not have caught some of them, but um, the Senior Center and the Library are both reducing hours to the public. Um, you know, hopefully you read the reasons for the Senior Center. Amy just described the Library. Neither of them are pleasant things to do. Um, those are much more public and visible. The idea of losing a police officer and a firefighter may not be quite as obvious to observe, but everyone understands it easy to see. Some of the internal things we're doing will be harder to measure. You know, generally things in this building, you know, and we'll do the best we can. Uh, I will tell you though, again, after doing this economic development peer community, um, our staffing is low. I've always known that, but I've never known how much. Um, we're doing things with two and three people that other communities are using six. So it's not that it's that close. It's really difficult. That's okay because we like to have people who want to work in a place like that. But it's hard to build a sustainable organization and imagine you can keep doing that forever. Um, one of the things we talk about as department heads, and we don't see it as much as the schools do, but you will as private sector people, is the next generation coming along and the next generation after that coming along are very different. Uh, time off is much more valuable, the pay is less important. That's kind of good from a municipal standpoint because we don't pay top dollar and we have generally more vacation time, maybe a week. But there's a lot of unpaid time here in terms of night meetings and extra work. We don't think we can keep competing with these other towns that have six people and we have three with that generation that's going to come along. It's not an immediate problem, but it is an eventual problem. Um, the town is, is very used to the services that are provided here, and, and I understand that. They don't have any reason to know better. I wish there was an easy way to measure community to community what towns do and how well they do it. I'm sure I would have some <coughs> negative surprises, but on balance, I know we do a good job. Um, it's just really hard to, hard to measure. We offer things in human elder services that other communities simply don't offer, just period, end of sentence. It's an, is it a nice to have or is it an essential? Depends who you ask. Uh, it's essential until you get to a really difficult choice and then you say, well, that's really just a nice thing to have. And as time goes on, you know, those are the kinds of choices we'll have to make. It was, it was very difficult and very unfortunate to hit public safety this year, but it's something we discussed for a couple of years. It was an eventuality. Um, they're such a large percent. I think for, their wage budget is 40% of our total budget. We can't keep balancing the rest of the budget um, and not hitting that. I do want to talk a little about Amy brought up state aid. Um, if you look at the top of page 12, if, if state aid had just gone up 2.5% a, a year, like Prop 2.5 does, since the last override, we have, we'd have $2.5 million each and every year more in state aid, which is what our, more or less, our operating budget gap is. That's just a phenomenal fact. So that has nothing to do with how we spend money, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. Just, and two and a half does not seem like a lot to ask. You know, if state aid had just gone up that much, that's where we'd be. You know, if you needed a single bullet item as to why we're in a revenue problem, that's it right there. Um, state aid, as you can see on the top, in the general fund makes up uh, you know, over 70% of our revenues. So what else do you do with your other revenues to make up that gap? You can't, unless you have an override. That's the only thing. I'm, I'm always open to ideas, but you know, I, I just don't see how you can. We have, in my estimation, it's clearer now than it even was a year ago. We have a revenue problem, not an expense problem. Yeah. You know, we can always do a better job spending money, um, but we really have a problem with revenue. And when this um, economic development project is done, I'll make sure you all get a copy. 
it's really interesting, and I've said this before, but now I have data. If you were to design a community, and you know, as a business, if you will, a good model, you do everything different than rent. You wouldn't have all the school children to educate. You wouldn't have no vacant land. You wouldn't have all houses. You know, you wouldn't be near an intersection of two major roads and have a cut through town. Honestly, pretty much all the fundamentals in Reading are upside down if, if economics was your objective. We are what we are, we need to deal with it the best we can. That's a hard message to get to people in Reading as opposed to some other town that may have a different fundamental setup. You know, Wilmington isn't far away. They have so much more business. They have a lot of vacant land. That's a big difference. They're not as much of a cut through. Still, they are somewhat. It seems like a couple minor words I'm saying. The economic impact is huge. So, you know, it's, it's interesting. Um, <clears throat> I want to jump to page 16 and just make sure. <coughs> I don't know why some of these tables are a little blurrier than others, <coughs> but um, I wanted to make sure you saw the town's operating budget, as per your guidance, is 1.25%. The accommodated costs are 2.7%, and you've had department heads go over all of them. Combined, it's a 1.5% municipal budget. <coughs> Down below, you've heard individual presentations. I wanted to show you um, what it looks like as a snapshot of each department in order to get to the 1.54 percent. And I, I thought it, for you and maybe for town meeting where there's new members, I just put another column saying these are the lines you vote on. So for some of the lines on page 16, it's a bottom line authority like snow and ice and facilities. It's much more common in our departments. You vote wages and expenses as shown on 17. 17 begins to show you examples of what we tried to do is spend less money on wages this year. There's a few exceptions to that. The library described why they needed to spend more, and facilities described why they're making a change and how to spend more. Um, you know, but by and large, those two uh, groups aside, we would definitely have a negative change in wages for the year, no question. And that was on purpose. That's, again, the reason why I wanted to overlay off or eliminate in the first year, have some expenses that could be more easily eliminated in year two. Now, if for some reason we are going to have an override a year from now or sooner, this won't necessarily be a pretty message. So what's the town going to lose? Oh, some one-time expenses. And I know that. But what's important for everyone to keep in mind is what's not in this budget. It's not what's going to be cut. It's what already has been cut or should have been added. And, you know, honestly, still public safety is at the top of that list. Every department can make a case for something else, though, without question. The demand on town services, in my knowledge, has not gone down in any area. <clears throat> I think this is a tough budget. It's not necessarily dramatically tough with a lot of really bad headlines. Uh, but, you know, losing library hours, uh, losing senior center hours, and losing police and fire is kind of a big deal all at once. So that's a pretty big sound bite, even though it's not disaster. <laughs> but it's, you know, Reading has not done that in a very long time. I honestly can't remember the last time police and fire have been eliminated. I don't know if the chiefs can, but I think it's been a long time. Uh, Early 90s, I think about Yeah, 20, so 20 odd years. Mm -hmm. It's not something we you know, kind of do lightly. Um, you know, you've heard um, from all the departments. I don't know if you have any other uh, questions or comments, but you know, we'll continue to do the best job we can. Um, if we have another year of one and a quarter budgets, I haven't thought about it much. Um, we will have expenses to be able to cut, but that if it's one and a quarter, that won't be enough. You know, I'm hoping it's closer to two, or maybe beyond that. Um, any kind of creative ideas are always welcome, except they have to pass Gail's muster, or Sharon's muster. Um, we were talking about that in the school budget earlier today. You can't be too creative with accountants. Um, <laughs> We've tried a lot of things on the town side, and some of them have been worked terribly. Um, we've tried some uh, regionalization efforts that really didn't work at all, and we've tried some that are great. But the point is, we do try. We've tried a lot of different things, a lot of staffing models. I feel sorry for Gene in a way. 
Um, her department is like the beta test for anything we might want to try. Let's go to halftime division heads. Let's see how that works. Now let's do this. So, you know, they're good natured generally about that. And then we kind of measure, you know, how do things work? Oh, terribly. Okay, well, let's not do that again. Let's not do that in any other department. Um, so we have really tried. Um, you know, governments aren't always known for moving quickly, but we've actually been pretty nimble and tried out things as best we can. Um, and we found that it's really meat and potatoes, this business. If you want good service, you have to have good people. And there's no magic about that. There's no, there's no surprise tricks you can really play. Um, I will say that, you know, based on experiences with other communities, especially, uh, the quality of employees we have is really good there. I am a little concerned about that in the future, and not just the generational thing, but I don't think Reading's reputation is quite what it used to be for coming here to work, and that should be disturbing to all of us. Um, you know, <clears throat> the direction the town is going very broadly is eventually going to work its way into your home price. There's just no question about that. I don't know how long it could be some years out. Um, that's a choice the community is going to have to make at some point. Uh, it's, you know, it's not a choice I'll make. I do want to remind you all, and I put it in page 18, that we have a very special town meeting coming up, and I don't want to say out loud what I put in there, but look on the fourth paragraph and you'll see. Um, there are not a lot of people in this commonwealth who have accomplished that feat. Very nice time enjoying that, I hope. So uh, thanks for all your attention. Um, you know, your questions are welcome at any time. It doesn't have to have been up till tonight. It can be any time, including in town meeting floor. Uh, I, I really don't know that we have a lot of creativity left. It's, it's, as I say, it's kind of the meat and potatoes time. Um, I don't know what's ahead. You know, we'll continue to work collaboratively pretty well. I, re I really wish we could measure things better and show people more. Um, I, I just know anecdotally and talking to other managers and mayors that I'm very lucky where I am. And I don't know how to measure that other than I, I will tell you. I, I know the employees here and we're really quite good. So thanks. Any other questions, comments? I do have a couple of things. Um, this is very nicely laid out. It's great. I like the letter that's here. One comment I would suggest, however, on page 18, yep. in that same fourth paragraph, a little bit higher up. Two, three, four, yep. Um, those that are satisfied yep. with the current deal, those that want will pay for more. Um, the current deal is declining, and I'm not sure that people yeah, appreciate true. that. So yeah, the current yes. deal of an expectation of services is no longer possible. That's services will point. decline. Um, and I'm not sure everyone appreciated that up front, but that's the reality yeah. of it. Yeah, I, I certainly understand what you're saying. And there may be some in the community that are okay with that, but that's not what Under I meant, so right, you're right. Right, right, No, it's just the comparison. Yeah. And, and you may be right. There may be people that are fine with it. But it, it, like if the expectation iceberg. is, yeah, yeah. If the expectation is going to stay the same size, that's just yeah, not that's possible anymore. Okay. Um, I would like if possible to talk a little bit about the um, the plan just to make sure that I'm sorry the, the uh, cogent plan I'm sorry so kind of the no, 14 next 15. week John yeah it would help to understand the layout of it and we can we can talk the detail of it through John yeah. um, but from my perspective as I'm reading it the request that will come next week is 438,000 for middle school language programs, 150,000 for the second year of the science curriculum. Um, there is a discussion in play so far about possibly doing one-time transfer from free cash of 150,000 for the science curriculum, leaving the 438 if that happened that way. Mm -hmm. And then in the discussions thus far, there's $132,000 roughly in identified items. Yeah, sounds right. Okay, that are, are in this holdback category. I've got them as four items. I've got a $40,000 Microsoft Office upgrade, a $15,000 town clerk professional technical uh, documentation. Oh, document restoration, sorry. Historic documents. Yep. The third is one of the police cruisers, $42,000. And the fourth is $35,000, which is a combination of the town and senior center projects, if those are to be held. Those are right. 
Okay, so that's the 132,000 uh, proposed and identified here. And, and just to stop you there, those are identified, but those are for the future need of the schools if they need them. It's not for a full budget. You know, they are meant right. to be voted in the town budget and right. then like a reserve fund. Right, 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 right. Is that new? Yeah. new? Got it. Um, the idea with the 150,000, though, would be for FY17? Yes. Yes, okay. So it would be ready Honestly, for the 18 the year. superintendent has agreed with that. I don't know what the school committee has done, so I don't mean okay. to speak for them. Okay. So they'll be with us next week yes. and posted, right? Okay, great. Um, in addition to that, um, there's a discussion of a couple of things. Some that we can discuss, some perhaps we can't, but the one we can, <laughs> um, expected savings from turnover and staff during the year. Mm -hmm. um, so in a sense, this is what we have seen return to free cash at the end of the year when it takes place. Not necessarily. Um, so. Again, I, I feel funny talking about the schools, but I'll, I'll just repeat something John said when he saw you a couple weeks ago. Um, they have something laid out in their, either their questions and answers or in the budget about three or four years of historic savings from turnover. Um, honestly, I don't remember the numbers. There was a lot of variability. It was maybe 50 or 75,000 one year and 300,000 another year or even more. Um, so, you know, you just don't know. Sometimes you know in advance retirements, but you don't always know turnover. Um, they won't know that till September. Right. Um, I'm trying to think. What John, what John used as an example, and again, I don't really mean to speak behind his back, but he's, he's not here, so too bad. <laughs> um, he said it's really nice to have that budget flexibility if you have a medical emergency, and he gave an example of it. And I agree with that. Sure, it's nice. Right. Um, to the, by the same token, what's wrong with going to town meeting and saying, I have this problem, I need some money? So it's, it's true that by turning that money over, if you will, for this purpose, he will absolutely lose flexibility. And I've told him, and he appreciates the fact, anytime you run into a financial need, I'm happy to stand up in front of town meeting and explain it. So it, it has taken away a little bit of a safety cushion in that sense, absolutely. But this is, seems to me to be the right time to do that. Right. And we don't know what that number will be. Right. And there are a few other things that could happen also. Um, Sharon, can I ask you, you the question? <laughs> Put you in the hot seat for a sec. Um, <clears throat> Uh, I think it's been indicated that you're you're kind of okay with this structure. Are there comments, questions that, that you have that would be kind of relevant well, to our I discussion? I to Bob and, and John Doherty and the finance director, and we have a lot of ideas of how to make it work, some of which I can't right. you know, talk about, but I feel comfortable that we'll get there. So, you know, in terms of deciding some assumptions that can be adjusted. Uh, part of our work is going to be figuring out how to present it to town meeting. Because at, at, mm -hmm. at the April town meeting, it will be FinCom's budget being presented. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, again, we can talk about this more next week, but I wanna, I'd want to, i like to be able to talk through a little bit more the things that we can about that. And, and again, next week is fine from my perspective. But I, I think... Yeah, and I'll just interject something John and I have talked about briefly. If between, the, uh, not for next week, I really don't think, but between now and town meeting, you need to have an executive session. That's okay. You want to have you know chair vice chair meetings that's okay whatever you feel you need is fine you know, we're happy to have yeah, I'll be there or not as John sees fit you know, whatever okay. you need to learn is, is fine with us those items that um, a lot the knowledge you have that allows you to feel comfortable with this are those things that we can discuss in executive session mm -hmm. it's up to John but conceivably I think that would go a long way in helping us yeah. understand. <clears throat> but just to be clear, it's not going to be discussed on the town meeting floor. Right. So it might help you understand, but then you're still stuck with the how we yeah. 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 The way I look at it is we have, a, we have a variety of tools and an opportunity to need less free cash. Let us take a crack at that and then come back to you and report on our progress. Fail miserably, we're going to need 438,000 of free cash. <laughs> and the town's already kicked in the 130 of it, so it's 300,000 of free cash. That's the worst that can happen unless we really screw up. Yeah, I, I actually view it as one level beyond that, where um, when asked back in October, 
how much we'd be willing to use from free cash. The number was 1.2 million. Right. The proposed budget is using 1.1. So there's 100 conceivably that we've already talked about. <coughs> I'm giving you my opinion on it. So you know, maybe at the end of the day, the problem is more like 200,000, yeah, something fair, like that. Um, but I think we have a responsibility to town meeting to kind of add our comfort level to Absolutely. this discussion. It is your budget, so yeah. I also want to be sensitive coming off of the litigation, You're supporting something that we cannot be, cannot have full disclosure of for anything that gets discussed in the executive session because I don't see that going over well. Well, let me, let me add to that that to be real simple, this is a marketing problem, not a finance problem. And I really don't mm -hmm. mean that in a bad way. Mm -hmm. um, for almost every single year, the school committee budget is higher than the bottom line town meeting votes. Usually there's a disclosed plan on how to balance. It's not always followed, and it doesn't have to be. They have bottom line authority. What's different this year has been there a lot more intense focus on some specific issue. This is no different than, you know, a $440,000 out of budget school budget two years ago, which what which there was. Um, by charter, we must, we, I must to you and you must to town meeting, show the school committee budget so everyone sees it. And then when the bottom line doesn't match, everyone has to do their own evaluation of is the, what's the school committee going to do to make it balance. Um, the only reason this year is different is because the intense public appreciate that it makes it very different but it's a it's not a finance problem it is a description problem and it's, and it's a challenge well, uh, it is a risk yeah, risk yeah. management mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I mean it, it seemed like kind of the least risky path forward in many ways again when this happened um, there was a reasonably ch reasonable chance there was going to be an override in April all selectmen were very open to that until they heard from the community, don't do it. They were ready. Whether they were in favor of really doing it or not, they were willing to ask, let the voters decide. <clears throat> so do we tell seven teachers they've lost their job and then they find other ones and then six weeks later there's an override? If an override had happened, we wouldn't even be here talking about this issue. So there's a lot of sort of factors, and as John said today, we're all doing this part, of, part for the first time. Transparency part is pretty important, though. Mm -hmm. Long term, yep. that might be the most important part. Yep. And the two <coughs> big risks that we had in our budget that we deal with regularly, we as Fincom decided we would, are state aid and health care costs, um, both of which resolved and, and, and netted to out. zero. Yeah. <laughs> and so those are out of the out of the risk picture at the moment. Yep. So now this is kind of a new category, and we just have to talk through how we best present that. Yeah, and, and again, you guys think about it separately. You talk about it next week as you will. Um, whatever solution you need, I'm sure John will do for, for information. Other comments, questions? Um, I will send out the warrant report to you um, when I think of it the next few days. You'll see there's half a dozen, a dozen of financial articles. Sharon mentioned one last week from the retirement board. There's some other things. Um, I'll send it up in the early so if you guys have questions. In the past, sometimes we gave it to you in one night and you voted in another. The plan now is the week after school committee for you to vote on everything. And I don't think that's going to be unreasonable. So if you have questions on anything, um, you have 10, 15 days to ask. Please do. We can do that. Happy to answer it. And obviously, um, the budget transfers may change, especially snow and ice. Not going to work. Yeah. Yeah. You say Friday morning at 2 a.m.? <laughs> <laughs> Friday morning at 2 to 4. <laughs> yeah. Um, I want to thank all you guys here. So all the department heads are here. We've got coverage from, from chiefs. Um, it's a big commitment. This is a tough budget. Um, I really appreciate you guys working so hard to, to make it work. Um, and hopefully, we'll be able to come up with other solutions going forward. I was going to say, hopefully next year's a little bit happier somehow. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Any other business we have? Nope. Okay, one thing. Um, I'd ask that for tonight, if you have anything for the school committee, um, to get it to me. How about we add one day? It's out tomorrow. If there's anything else, and some people have sent stuff. 
but very important. The Q&A is pretty uh, chock-filled, mm -hmm. so take a look at that first. <laughs> um, but if you have questions beyond that, it would be great. And then obviously next week we talk through uh, the issues of kind of what and how and, and how we're going to we have to create it as our budget. It's our budget to present to town meeting, so that's important that we figure that out. Do yes. we have one session for the school committee budget or two? One. I you just asked that. I was wondering if the cause of all this question and answers is you don't have enough time, but there have been school committee questions so far. Well, I mean, they're both 100 pages, and yeah, we have I mean, two nights for the town and just one for the school committee. So yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm sure, well, I'm sure John would be thrilled to spend another <laughs> <hundred> hour. <laughs> <laughs> you know, FinCom once upon a time used to meet more than once a week during March. There was more meetings than three or four. There used to be a lot more departments on the town side, so there'd be a whole bunch of people coming up and saying, I've got a $75,000 budget, and let me tell you all about it. <laughs> so, um, you know, you guys won't appreciate this, but I believe the town meeting 15 years ago, the annual town meeting was 18 nights, and most of it was the budget. Oh my Things are a lot different. <laughs> yeah, let's not go back to that. No. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's be careful with additional <laughs> meetings. <laughs> you know, ask, ask the schools if they feel like an extra night would help. I have no idea. I was just thinking about that tonight for the first time, honestly. You're right. It's, it's a bigger budget. It's about the same in complexity. Um, we have more presenters than they will. Right. I you think it's see. important to have the department heads come in and tell you because they know how to run a department. I don't. You know, see how it goes next week. So part of the question, I think, is how much depth we want John to go into um, in the presentation. Yeah. So typically, I think it's it's a pretty deep presentation, like a few hours worth, um, and then questions after that. So wh wh what do you guys think? I mean, so how much time have you had to digest? He would do two hours of presentation and then subsequently address the questions that we've submitted? Uh, I'm trying to remember. Maybe it was an hour and a half, and then... Yeah. yeah, the whole thing I think came to kind of a couple of hours and then was opened up for other discussion. So the presentation piece does address the questions. I think at the, at the end of it, yeah, and that's the advantage of getting it to them now so they really can yeah. develop answers right. to it. All right, now I can yeah. integrate it into the whole discussion. Mm -hmm. I have a couple questions that I'll send your way. I already went through it. Great. And, and do keep in mind for what it's worth, doesn't mean you should know less, but do only vote one line for the schools, whereas you vote many lines for the town. So it's important you know mm -hmm. more about the town budget, if you will. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean you shouldn't know it about schools, but it's it's not your mission to put this in, I guess. The town meeting's looking for you to give all the detail on all the lines that are being voted. You might have to stand up and answer a question about a lot more lines on our side. So right. that's, that's probably why. We recommend on the town side to, to spend more in this area than yeah. that area, and the school side we don't. Right. That's probably why historically this discussion happens the way it does. Your responsibility is different on the school budget than it is on the town budget. How many questions have you gotten so far from us collectively? One person, two pages. Okay. Can I point a finger? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, you know, <laughs> hindsight. <laughs> I, you know, hindsight not, not being that helpful, but um, if you're able to attend some of the, the earlier meetings, it makes a huge difference in, ter in terms of trying to digest this because um, it's daunting. There's a ton of stuff in there. But, you know, at the, we are where we are, so we've got to figure out where we go from here and how to how to get through it, how to make sure that kind of everybody's up to speed. Um, what I would suggest, though, is um, don't try to read it the night before. <laughs> It'd be a bad night. <laughs> well, I think, I mean, I know I attended at least two of the meetings. They all start to blur after a certain point. Um, but I'm assuming everyone has attended at least one or two of the earlier school committee meetings, right? Or watch them. Or watch them. Yeah, or okay. watch them. Yeah, our CTV like is a great way it, to do it. If, if everyone is feels comfortable with it we may not necessarily need the two meetings you know one may suffice i don't think anyone will object to one fewer meeting <laughs> i mean it depends on, on what you guys i mean I, I attended two or three of them i feel 
pretty good about most of what was covered. I know kind of what I want to probe on a little bit further. Um, but again, I heard it over two or three nights. Mm -hmm. I don't know how, how others feel about it. I'm flexible to how we do it. Number of meetings. You guys generally feel like you got out of the town side what you need. Yes. 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 So do we want to, um, let's start with the questions. Let's talk to John. Um, if everyone has really read through it, then perhaps his presentation can be a little bit shorter. Actually, I was thinking the same thing, Mark. I didn't want to, I didn't want to take that away from anybody, but that was my initial thought. We've, we've been getting fed a little bits of this information throughout the whole time. And again, I haven't attended them, but I've watched them. So I, I, I do feel like I have a decent handle on it. And you've talked a lot, a lot about the pain points, it's called them, mm -hmm. right? In, mm -hmm in a lot of detail. So, and those are the points, like you said, those are the points we may want to probe more, but the other stuff is sort of vanilla, let's call it, right? Like year over year, it's those pain points that I think we've talked about a lot of them or you've heard them in the meetings and why the school committee was doing what they were doing. And I don't know, I do feel like it could be a little less and then maybe a little more Q&A, which I think would have more value both to us and to anybody sort of watching on TV, our meetings and try to get more information. I feel like the Q&A is going to be the real thing that flushes out anything, anything further. Are we yep. expecting a larger public turnout? For next, next meeting? Week. Right, so I have not heard yeah, anything I back said yet. This meeting is fine, he doesn't expect a big turnout, so. Just building on Mark's point that the, the Q&A I think would be valuable for us and I don't know if the public will be there and want to engage at a higher level than they have in these past yeah, two meetings. I think that happened in the school committee level, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I think right. it did. I there were right. more than one issue, but there was one big issue. Right. 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 But I feel yeah, people people spoke their mind. Yeah. yeah. I feel like that there may be a a good reason to have an executive session before we're able to kind of turn the corner toward a vote and know how we're going to present things. I don't know it's sort of a double edged sword. It is. Yeah. Right. Definitely. Right. Because that opens the yeah the it questions. Starts to, it starts well, and it starts to look less transparent. It does. I think we can accomplish what we need to do in the standard based budget without an executive session. But what if, what if not there yet? Yeah. <laughs> I just, my, my, like, I feel like we, oh, without having an executive session, I know, I, I understand the transparency, I really do, because I know that people really don't like that, but it's hard for me to look someone in the eye and say, it's okay, until I really know it's okay. And that's my only issue with it. I agree. I don't mm -hmm. love the executive executive session idea, but I do feel like that's our job is to say we think it's okay, so to speak. Well, your and only choice is to go talk to them in groups of less than five. You know, okay. Going to come. One, two, three at a time of this group of you. Talk to them on the phone. I'm sure you'd be happy to do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love throwing this time away. But the problem is we can't then share it with the rest no. of the group. No, you can't. <laughs> So it's kind of making a select committee. Start. Yeah. Just see, sound him out before yeah. next Wednesday. Yep. And see what he. I don't know what his response to us has been. Yeah. Maybe I, there's I more information he can share. But. I mean, this how what, what it, can can you well can you do you know if he can tell us why he why town meeting can't know it, know everything. Collective bargaining is part of that. And there, but there's more to it than collective bargaining. Yeah, I mean, we're in, we're all we're both in collective bargaining right now. So okay. there's there's things that were said over the last two FinCom meetings that you know maybe should or shouldn't have been said okay. by department heads and me. You know, I don't think it did any damage, but you have to be careful when you're negotiating with the unions. You don't want to be saying some things or not saying some things by inference. It's just a bad idea, and it's nothing against our unions. It's just you just don't do it. It's is, really respectful. But is that essentially the, the totality of the reason that that it can't be fully transparent is because of collective bargaining? Yes, okay. um, I think so. Okay. I, I don't. For me, it would be. I uh -huh. think it is for him. I, I okay. can't. I guess I can't fully say that. All right. So well, I think that like that can be something defensible to tell. Yeah, like I mean, I, not not because like we're trying to be. You know, I I will tell you, the public that we have I think seven unions 
plus we have to figure out what facilities does because they're under the schools right now. Um, I had to make assumptions for all of them. I could have picked the same assumption for all of them or different ones. It doesn't matter what I did. I can't share that with you and I wouldn't. Um, I don't share that with the unions. <laughs> negotiate mm -hmm. but um, one assumption can make a big swing right? absolutely and it's a little easier in the town budget to figure mm -hmm. out what my assumption is on some small unions not mm -hmm. necessarily but there's a lot more available data shall we say and you know the alternative was to negotiate in the winter and I I was the one that I refused to do that with the town unions because I didn't know if there's going to be an April override and I, we all had lunch in January I think was the first week and I said once I have a sense of an April override we'll negotiate but if we're going to have one I'm not going to pick you off have a settlement and then have an override because then you're all just going to be mad and want to come back so we just started this week um, and it's now it's a very intense schedule to try to get things done so this has really been a strange year in a lot of ways normally we would have started a couple months ago at least but that was the reason So let me suggest, I'm sorry, go ahead. So if we're going, if, if there's a question of whether or not we go into executive session, it would be for our next meeting? No. You would or need to tell us 48 hours in advance so people can post it, just to be clear. But would we be having that discussion next week, either before or after the school budget, or the weekend, the week, the following Wednesday? I don't know what date that is. But. And the, the reason I ask is, um, if you're going to have a conversation, I perhaps we can you can guide what, whether you think. That's exactly what I was going to suggest. <laughs> yeah, why don't we do that? If it works with you guys, I will contact John first thing in the morning, see if I can sit down with him and talk a little bit, mm -hmm. um, and talk about what our our concerns are, and see wh what his thoughts are, what what he can and can't say. Um, and an approach. But what I would suggest is we keep next week's meeting as is for now. Um, depending on the outcome, <coughs> I suppose we could go into executive session at the end if that made sense, if we yeah, posted in advance. Yeah. Um, or another meeting, or perhaps if it's not. It probably should be the same night, honestly. It's probably not yeah. a very long executive session. Right. So, is that? That works. That All right. Works. Approach it that way. And then the sounding good is all right. That's yeah. that's the marketing side. Right. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so please read through questions, you know, we'll say by tomorrow. I'll reach out to John um, and then plan on next week um, and we'll if there's going to be an executive session perhaps that's something that we'd have to give notice about anyway and everyone would be informed that that's going to happen so next week's an important meeting mm -hmm. as, as is the following one <laughs> anything else anybody want to make a motion motion to adjourn right. second <laughs> all those in favor opposed we are adjourned Zero. Thanks, guys.